Hello, everybody, and welcome to our special presentation of Northwest Conference Football on WOSN and WTLW. I'm Doug Jenkins alongside Danny Holbrook. We are set for a big showdown in the NWC. Two teams at the top of the conference, Columbus Grove on the road to take on the Allen East Mustangs. We're looking for a battle tonight. Yeah, I look at both these teams and physicality is what I think about on the offensive and defensive line. And Doug, I think the toughest team will win the game tonight. I think the thing that stands out right now is both teams have impressive wins on their resumes already with just four weeks into the season. Absolutely. It's a huge game as far as standings in the Northwest Conference goes. Both teams undefeated. You get two wins in the, in the league and you're really taking off. Absolutely. This is going to go a long way to determining who will wear that Northwest Conference crown later in the season. But with the 16-team playoff format, there's a lot of jockeying for playoff. Well, there, there's no doubt. In, yeah. The there's no doubt in my mind both these teams are going to make the playoffs. Yeah. If, if they continue the trend, there's no doubt. Absolutely. Let's get into the keys of the game. First, looking at the visitors for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. For Columbus Grove, Doug, Doug it's physical in the trenches. I'm talking about offensive and defensive line. Impose your will. You're on the road. Flex your muscle a little bit. Secondly, establish the run with physicality. It goes right back to the offensive line. If you come in here and you dominate the line of scrimmage and you run the football, you've got a really good chance of winning. And lastly, they've got great linebackers at Columbus Grove. Let them clean up when you make mistakes. Let them fill those gaps. Let them hit hard, let them do their job. Very athletic and physical team. Now you turn around, you look at the Mustangs of Allen East. What stands out to you? Well, first off, don't become predictable or one dimensional. Mix it up on first down. Mix up the run with the pass. Give yourself a chance on first down. Secondly, stay out of third and long. First and second down are your friends. Don't get into third and eight. Don't get into third and nine where you become predictable. And lastly, homecoming momentum. Take the crowd. Take the fans. Take all the momentum you got tonight. Go out and get a big homecoming win. There is a sizable contingent of blue and white in the stands. It's a sea of blue and white here in Mustang country. They're ready for a thriller, as are we. And we'll be back with more right after this. And welcome back to Allen East. Doug Jenkins, Danny Holbrook with you here on WOSN, a big Northwest Conference showdown. Tonight's officials, Larry Maynard and Rob Leonard, Challen Stewart, Matthew McCauley, and Dana Motter. Here comes the kick, and we are underway. That's a low-line drive. That one's going to skip back into the end zone. No, he's going to tightrope it before finally going over the goal line. <laughs> now we're underway. It could have been a disaster, Doug. The ball got away from him. He didn't really go after it too much. Well. Could have got... Big time problem. Well, I think there was uh, back there was Trey Hensley waiting on it, waiting for it to go into the end zone. And it took a hard left as it got there. You see Columbus Grove points per game, 23 points per game, allowing just 13. Allen East putting up uh, some more points as they come in at 3-1 under the tutelage of uh, Joel Billings. 35 points per game to 19 uh, that they're giving up. Allen East going to start off at their 20-yard line. And we are <laughs> almost ready to get underway, but <laughs> we're going to we get, were. I think, an offside against Columbus Grove. Doug, we commented off the air, Allen East has a huge, huge crowd. I mean, there's not a seat in here, and I'm looking across the field, and uh, maybe Columbus Grove is a late-arriving crowd, <laughs> but I thought there'd be a lot more people over there. So it, uh, for, for a game as for big as this exactly. here in the midway point of the season, most definitely, quarterback Jacob Hirschberger, Leading 51% of his passes coming into the season. He's going to throw it out in the flat right side. Layman with it. And Layman going to be brought down at the 30-yard line for a pickup of five. I like when when coaches start kids out like that in a big game like this. It's a high percentage pass, and he's going to get his confidence up. And look, they're going to come up on that one time, and he's going to go deep because he's got a really strong arm. He is a very good multi-dimensional quarterback. He's thrown for 519 yards. Yeah, six yards per carry. This time the pitch left side. No, Hirschberger rather going to keep it, but Columbus Grove, they do a good job going left to right. We'll bury him at the line of scrimmage, and that's going to bring up a second down situation, no gain on the play. They got a great set of linebackers at Columbus Grove. In fact, the Columbus Grove coaching staff, they think that these three kids can all be All-State this year. How many times do we hear that <laughs> out of a coach? You never hear that. All three of them? Yeah, that is impressive. Hershberger takes the snap. He wants to go down the sideline and just couldn't connect. Intended on the right side for Carson Klum, the junior wide receiver. He had a step on the defender there on the uh, the near sideline. I think that was uh, Mitchell Ellerbrock running with him, but just couldn't quite hang uh, or put that one in the bread basket. Carson Klum's an outstanding athlete. He's a multi-sport player here at Allen East, basketball, football, and uh, he gets out on the outside. He's a playmaker. He gets his ball in space, and he can make things happen. Hershberger in the shotgun ball on the left, Tash. He's going to take off and run on the design QB draw. He's got some room in the middle across the 40. He's got the first down all the way out to the 50-yard line before he'll be brought down. A 
big run up the middle. Just a nice QB draw right there. Well, Coach Andy Schaefer said earlier in the week, we got a game plan for this young man. He might be the best quarterback we saw all year. And look, he's going to use his feet to his advantage. And you saw what he did right there. Went right up the middle for a huge game. Right back to the line of scrimmage. This time it will be a give inside and not a whole lot of room to operate there for Joe Hole. Hole coming in five yards per carry. Six touchdowns on the season. He's only going to get a yard on that carry, though. Yeah, he's got some really nice stats. 5'6", 160-pound senior. 79 carries, 442 yards this year for six touchdowns. He can get into the end zone. Boy, he smells it. He goes. That time, though, Columbus Grove did a good job just bottling up the middle. Hershberger back to pass, rolling out to his right, looks downfield. He's got some pressure coming, going to need to get rid of it. He does, and well, that goes back to sometimes your best pass is the incomplete pass. Well, that, that's a three-year starter right there, Doug. Yep. That's a kid that knows exactly what to do. I'm not going to throw – you know, who knows? Last year he could have threw that down the middle of the field. He might have tried to make something happen. He knows, look, I can, I can live to fight again, and that's exactly what he did. Well, you remember last year these two teams were right about the same yes. spot in the Northwest Conference standings when they met at Columbus Grove, and it was mistakes that got the yep, better of the exactly, Mustangs that exactly. night. Uh, but nothing happening in that area there. Hershberger on third and nine now with the ball just across the 50 on the Columbus Grove 49-yard line. Got about 10 seconds left on the play clock here as he gets the signal from Joel Billings on the sideline. Now down to three seconds. Going to have to take the snap. He does. Got some time. Rolls to his right looking downfield. Nobody open. And he's going to dump this one out of bounds as well. That'll be incomplete, bring up a fourth and long situation here at midfield. Let's see what they elect to do. There's a flag on the play, Doug, in the backfield. He may have got hit late. We're going to see if that's the case. That's going to give them an automatic first down. Oh, yeah, that flag is right where exactly. he released the ball <laughs> yeah. from. So that could be a costly penalty for Columbus Grove. They already had an, uh, an offsides to start things off here. Oh, they're going the other way. Oh. So I don't know what the penalty was. They haven't called it yet. And no signals from the officiating crew just yet. Oh, no, they're, no, I was wrong. They're going back. Well, he took off the wrong way. Uh, now he's kind of smiling about it. Walking the That's a personal foul. Walking the passer. Hey, here we go. Down. I didn't see it, Doug, but I did see You're correct. Where the flag was thrown is exactly where Hershberger went out of bounds. What a luxury this kid gives you. Your offensive line, and I'm not saying they're not good, you don't have to be great. <laughs> you really don't. <laughs> right. Because that kid moves around in the pocket so well. Yeah, absolutely. You don't have to be the biggest physical guy. You, nope. You've got to be disciplined and make sure that you don't get caught for those holds because he can extend the play. There's the uh, handoff hole. Hole is going to be hit at the line of scrimmage. Colton Scrove doing a good job. Oh, that's a late flag, too, and I think we're going to be moving 15 yards to our right again. It's just really two bad plays by the Columbus Grove defense, and you've got to be disciplined in the game. And I know you're jacked up, and I know you're excited. Look at big number 50, Tad oh. Cook. Wow. Number eight came in late there, yes, Lawson did. Mag, and I think that's what the officials saw. Oh, they waved it off. Oh my goodness, we can take a look at that again. I, I, I don't know how you wave that off. He came in awful late. He was already down. Tad Cook had taken him down, and Lawson Mag came in and cleaned it up. So Columbus Grove perhaps catches a break there. Two minutes into the first quarter, it'll be second down and about seven for the Mustangs. Harshberger going to launch this one down the left sideline into traffic, and... It'll be incomplete, almost picked off by Shep Hulker, who comes in with one interception already on the season, just about got himself another one. Watch this throw here. It's a really good throw, and the only place he could put it was where he did. And Shep Hawker comes in and makes it. He almost got his feet in, Doug. That was tremendous. That was a great effort by Hulker, and it'll bring up third down and eight here for the Mustangs. This is where I love Hershberger in third and eight. And I told you earlier, I'd like to see him stay out of third and long, but this kid can really make things happen on third and long. Absolutely. We saw what he did on the QB draw. This time, though, he's going to throw pressure coming from the backside. Fires, and that one is caught. And that's going to be close to first down yardage. Almost picked off, doing a good job as Mitchell Ellerbrock just got there a little bit early. And then Kenton, or Keaton Lehman, rather, the senior receiver, comes up with the catch, and it's going to come up and make it a fourth down and probably about a yard here. And, 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 I, and look, I think Joel Billings, I think this is a no-brainer. I think he's going to go for it. I think you get your quarterback on the edge, you let him get out there and create, and you let him make some magic. Absolutely. Fourth and short, I think this is almost less than a yard. They're going to shift Keaton Lehman to the top side of the line. Snap was a little bit low, but that's going to be enough for the first down. Nice job handling the snap by Hershberger. Gets behind the left side of the line, takes it for the first down yardage, and on the edge of the red zone now are the Mustangs. Doug, watch this. They pulled the guard on that from the right side, and he did a great job of following him into the hole, and that was a great design play by Coach Billingsley and the staff. 
Most definitely was. Fresh set of downs now for the Mustangs of Allen East. Hershberger back to throw. Forced from the pocket. Rolling to his left side. Fires into the flat. He's got his man. He's going to connect over there to Hole. And he'll be knocked out of bounds. At about the 15 into the red zone uh, go the Mustangs. Our red zone sponsor is Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, and scrap, iron, and cars. Call 419-384-3392. I love the drive they have going here, Doug. Easy passes. They're not putting pressure on Hershberger, and he's doing everything he needs to do to lead this team down the field. Tenth play of the drive. That's Jack Hole, and five yards per carry for the junior running back. He's hit at the line of scrimmage. Not a lot of running room for him there. He's going to get a yard at that. Yeah, we talked earlier in the broadcast about those linebackers. When they do get through that hole those linebackers are solid and they're not going to get ran against they may go on the outside a little bit you're not going to run a lot up the middle yeah columbus grove has really controlled the interior here on this opening drive but it's been alan east who's been working the edges yeah, quite absolutely. well absolutely it's all jake and hershberger in this running game and they're really doing a nice job of getting on the edges hershberger takes a snap fires it out into the flat he's got a hole there a hole going to be upended as he gets to about the 10 yard line might be a little bit shy of the first down in on the tackle there for Columbus Grove, Lawson Mag, the junior liar, excuse me, the senior linebacker. And see what they're doing, Doug. They're just bringing him out to the boundary, and they're just, those defensive backs from Grove are staying five yards off of him, and they've seen that on film, obviously, and they're get, it's like an extended handoff of six and seven yards, and I love the play calling. They're sticking to their strengths, being very quick, being very deliberate, moving the ball right down the field. This one started at the 20, now at the 10-yard line. There's the handoff hold. Took the initial hit, and he'll get enough for the first down as he gets past the 10 to about the 9-yard line. Tackle there made by Tad Coke and, uh, Cook and company. <laughs> Tad Coke is an imposing <laughs> figure. He's 6'3", 240, and I don't see any fat on that kid. No. <laughs> he looks like a Division One linebacker. He is a, a line mover. Yeah, he looks, he looks mad. He just plays mad. Look at him. It's going to be <laughs> second and goal. Hershberger rolling out to his left, looks into the end zone, doesn't see anything. Now he's going to throw for the back corner, and that is incomplete. Intended for Caleb Hopkins, the senior receiver. It was open in the back corner, but that ball just unable to connect. Doug, I'm not sure he didn't have a better angle if he could have turned the uh, corner there and got up there. You see here, there's nobody out in front of him. In fact, he had a receiver out there, and I think if he'd have got it, he, he could have got six on the board there. But he made the wrong decision, but they lived to fight again. So it'll be third down a goal from the nine-yard line of the Columbus Grove Bulldogs here in the opening quarter of this contest. Of course, our instant replays. Now we're going to see a timeout, and we will take a timeout as well. 7.45 remains in the first quarter, and on the Hulker drywall scoreboard, we are scoreless, but Allen East on the move. Back after this on WOSN. Welcome back. Third and goal, Mustangs. As Hershberger rolling to his left, he's got pressure coming. Lobs for the back of the end zone, and that is a one-handed interception. Yes, it was. And that will be a takeaway for Columbus Grove. So what could have been for Allen East comes to pass with an interception. And as I said earlier, he was making all the right decisions, and he just tried to force it in there. He got a lot of pressure on the outside. He'd have been self-served if he could have just turned the corner like he did the first play, and, and that's what happens when you make those decisions, and they're just two good athletes in that backfield. Antonio Gray with the pick, his first of the year, and it's scoreless on the Hulker, Hulker Drywall scoreboard. Tonight's scoreboard, again, sponsored by Hulker Drywall and Plastering. Visit HulkerDrywall.com to see how we can help you. And here's the thing, Doug. It was an interception, and I know it's it's deep in territory. It's a 12-play drive. They took yeah. a lot of time off the clock, and they got nothing out of that. So you cannot do that. And Columbus Grove will start off at their own 20-yard line. What a pick. Brent Renner brings his squad out onto the field, and we're going to be seeing a heavy dose of number three, Trenton Barraza, as we see a flag thrown there. Barraza, just a sophomore, but making himself an <laughs> impact player in the NWC already. Yeah, Doug, the 6'1", 175-pound sophomore, 69 attempts this year for 430 yards, 6.2 average. I like that. Every other time I touch the ball, I get first down. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad, but yeah. that one's coming back, though. Is, uh, that's going to be a hold, and we've seen some early miscues from Columbus Grove uh, with flags being thrown. Yeah, we take a look at how they've played this year, Doug, and you look at their games, Pandora 34-23, Liberty Benton, they lose it 13-24, Patrick Henry 7 nothing, and then 38-6 last week. They can grind out wins. Mm -hmm. They can really be effective if it's a tight game, so this is really two contrasting styles. 
Brenton Renner, the senior quarterback, has completed 58% of his passes for 627 yards, three touchdowns and an interception on the season. Goes out of the shotgun here on first and 20, deep in their own territory, back to the 10. And Barraza going to be canned and put down at the 10-yard line. Columbus Grove not able to find anything on the left side. No, Rogan Paxson engaged. Wireman got in there and really did a nice job of slowing him down. And number eight there for the Mustangs, Joe Hole gets in the backfield. And they do a great job of getting through those gaps and busting up that O-line from Grove. Of course, those replays are made possible tonight by Eastside Insurance, giving us a second look at the plays here tonight. And look, you saw that penalty at the, in the first play. Now you're at second and 20. That kind of stuff really comes back to haunt you if you don't execute on second down. Don't have to get all the 20 yards here, but want to get a bunch to make it a manageable third down. Runner going to throw across the middle, and he's got a man. That's a first down. Never mind. They'll just take them all right now. Forget what I said, Danny, as he finds a man open in Lawson Mag. It was just sat down in the middle of the defense for the first down. Well, you see here, second and 20, Brenton Renner says, you know what, I'm just going to pick up 22 on a nice pass. Kid's got a nice, strong arm. He sits in the, in the pocket, and he looks real comfortable going across the middle. And give number six credit. He got across that middle and did not fear anything. Yeah, Reynolds did a nice job just finding the space in the defense, and Renner able to find him first down. That's a Union Bank first down for Columbus Grove. Union Bank committed to you. Renner in the shotgun now. Looks over to the side and gets the play call from the Columbus Grove coaching staff. This first quarter speeds along. Pass out into the flat. He's going to connect with Zach Reynolds over on the far side at the 40-yard line before he's knocked out of play. That'll bring up third down and about five. So I love those rhythm passes, and, and he just steps back, and he takes one step back, and he throws it to the side. If Alan East does not get pressure on Brenton Renner tonight, it could be a long night. He's just sitting back there, and he's looking over the field, and we saw that 21-yard gain there, no pressure on him at all. And that's been kind of the opposite uh, yes. when Columbia, excuse me, when Alan East had their first possession, as you can see where they had some issues. Jacob Hirschberger. Scrambling a little bit, but that's kind of their, their game is to roll him out. Oh, absolutely. They're, they're going to move him out on the edge. That's where he's most explosive. And uh, Alan East had no issues moving the ball there. We saw 12 plays, and they just made a, the wrong choice. Barraza takes the handoff there. Not a whole lot of running room behind the right side of the line. You can guarantee a lot of the conversation in the locker room this week, and the coaching staff is containing Barraza. I saw what he did against Liberty Benton. It ended up being a loss for Columbus Grove, but he was – largely responsible for keeping them in that game when they went down early. Yeah, he is an exciting back, and uh, when he gets the ball toting, he's really effective. So it'll be first down as they got just enough for the Union Bank first down there. Renner takes a snap to give to Barraza, and he is wrapped up and brought down in the backfield. By shooting in there was Keaton Miller. Keaton Miller does a great job of breaking containment on the outside, and he's got enough speed. And I like that defensive line from Allen East. They're quick, and you saw how quick they were. Trenton Barraza didn't stand a chance. He did a good job getting around on the left side there. Miller makes it second down and 10 now for Columbus Grove as they approach midfield at their own 44-yard line. And we're going to get a flag before. I don't know if this and it, is another it, flag on Columbus it's Grove. It's going to be on Columbus Grove, Doug, and I think Trenton Barraza was lined up in the neutral zone. He's looking at the official, and the official walked up and t said something to him, and that's exactly what they're calling. So Columbus Grove going backwards. This will be the second penalty offensively, the fourth penalty already in the game. We've only had two possessions so far. So we're at four and a half and counting here in the first quarter. Doug, I know we're gushing a lot, but I, I don't think people understand. There's a lot of great athletes out there on the field, and I get so pumped about this on both sides of the ball. Well, they're definitely faster than me. Yeah. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Well, okay. <laughs> that throws Captain obvious. <laughs> that one is incomplete <laughs> intended for Zach Reynolds. I saw you come up to the booth, Doug. I knew you were. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm day to day with plantar fasciitis. It's You're it's on been the nagging IR. me all season. Yeah. <laughs> Got <laughs> shoulder <laughs> problems. <laughs> Third and fifth. Let's not get started on that. <laughs> Third and 15 coming up for Columbus Grove. And they've faced a long yard situation already this drive, deep in their own territory the last time where they were able to move the chains. This time they're going to have to take it all the way to the Allen East 46 if they want to keep the drive moving or at least get close to make it a fourth down decision as Brenton Renner gets set. He's got Barraza set to his left. Three receivers to the right, one to the left, takes a snap. Excuse me, Allen East coming with some pressure. They threw for Barraza. That a little bit overthrown, but really good coverage by Jackson Thompson. Just a freshman linebacker out there, but Barraza 
He's not going to see much room to work with, even if that ball had been put on the money. Jackson Thompson, number 30, is a fantastic athlete. He's a great football player, and you ought to see him play baseball, Doug. He is fantastic. <laughs> I know the family well, great people, and he's a great athlete. A little shout out there to Jackson. <laughs> Good job there. Got the job done. And it'll be a punting situation now. Brent Renner is the punter for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. This one with a sidewinder. Fielded on the hop at the 20-yard line. And a good return, and a flag comes yeah, down. That was coming back. There was a block in, uh, the, bla in the back. Yeah. Yeah, Lawson Mag got sprung onto the outside there. But as you said, that one likely coming back. We talked about this one last meeting yeah. last year on September 17th. Columbus Grove won at home 34-7. This was a highly touted matchup going into that one, but Grove just had uh, the Mustangs number that evening. Clint Easton lead the all-time series, as you can see, 31-25, 57th meeting between these two schools. Ben Rice pulling all the stats out tonight. <laughs> Thank goodness, 57th meeting. <laughs> okay, all okay. right. He doesn't take credit for that one. Are you surprised, Doug, that uh, Alan East went with a man defense on that third down and they let their guys go out there and play man coverage and brought the linebackers on a blitz? I think that's what you have to do. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. you've got to take some risks like that. You, 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 look, we already saw it when Renner yeah, completed yep, that yep. that second and long earlier. Than that's he had why all I asked sorts that. of time. Yeah. So now with 356 remaining in the second quarter. Mustang start on their own 26. There's a handoff left side. Boy, it is tough sledding in between the tackles tonight so far, Danny. It is tough sledding, but did you see what happened when Jacob Hershberger took the ball, put it in Hull's bread basket? The linebacker on the left side followed Hershberger, so he didn't know if the ball was there or not. One of these times he's going to pull that back out, and he's going to take off around the end. That's a very good point. And this time, Hershberger to keep it on his own. Hershberger trying to get the edge and end up running into one of his own blockers as he gets to about the 31-yard line for a two-yard gain. Jacob Hershberger keeps the ball himself around. Well, they're going to have to get real creative tonight against that uh, throw front. And uh, they'll, they'll, they'll be happy with three to four yards of play because if they can keep those 12, 13, 14 play drives, they're going to be in this game all night. 22 seconds left on the play clock, so they're taking a little time here. Hershberger gets set. He's got a hole set to his right, drops a pass. He's got some time this time. Fires it out into the flat. That one is tipped, and it is incomplete. Intended out on the far side for Joe Hole. I, I, I'm going to tell you what, Doug. I think I'd stay away from Antonio Gray. That's the second time. He almost got that one, and uh, he, he's really hot. You know, tough in uh, man coverage out there. I tell you what, when I was going over the stats, getting ready for this game, the thing that stands out at Columbus Grove, they're ball hawks. You oh, absolutely. Can't float it yeah. out there. They've got several interceptions on the season already. Well, when you got two teams this equal in talent, turnovers are going to are going to be a huge factor, and we've already seen one tonight. I think Hershberger will punt it. Gets it away under some pressure. He was lucky to get that away. That could have been blocked. Barraza on the hop, and Barraza is brought down on the open field at the 40-yard line. That's my line. guy, Jackson Thompson. <laughs> that's Jackson. That's the freshman, Jackson Thompson. He plays bigger than a freshman, that's for sure. <laughs> His mom and dad smiling from ear to ear. <laughs> Grandma and Grandpa, the whole family. So Columbus Grove starts off a good field position here, though, as they'll be at their own 41-yard line. All right, I know it says it's 76 right now. But maybe it's the press box temperature, <laughs> it's all, 95. All the hot air in here. <laughs> the Billy Elvis beside us. It is a really, we talked about it before we went on. It's been a beautiful fall yes. for, for high school football and another nice night here in northwest Ohio. There's the give to Barraza. Stutter step behind the line. And again, between the tackles, it's been tough and not a whole lot of room there. He'll get a yard maybe if that. I, only, I know he only got a, a yard, Doug. Did you see him sidestep Keaton Miller? Yep. That was amazing. I mean, that's just some serious athleticism. We can see that on the replay. He just steps aside and Keaton Miller misses him. And Keaton Miller's a really good athlete. Yes, he is. And just <laughs> think about this. Barraza's a sophomore. He's still learning. <laughs> The game has slowed down for him, but it's going to slow down even more for him as he, his career continues. Renner takes a snap, fires it down the middle of the field, and that is a nice pass deflection broken up by Carson Klum. I thought that was going for six. Carson Klum just saved the day, Doug. That had six points written all over it, a beautiful pass, and Carson Klum, you can't play that ball any better than Carson did. Check this out on the east side insurance replay. Did a nice job stepping around him. Really made a nice recovery to get back to it. And it'll bring up third down along, third and nine. 
with a Grove Bulldogs on their own 42-yard line. For all the offense we've talked about, Doug, it's a defensive struggle right now. It has been. This first quarter has been flying by with just 2.07 left on the Hulker drywall scoreboard. Takes a snap under some pressure, throws it out for the screen pass to the left. And some room to run as Barraza is going to get the first down. Tape punches it in to Allen East territory. Took some hits there, too, as he takes it to about the 41 of the Mustangs. Well, what happened there was Landon polling. The defensive tackle got caught in space out trying to guard Barraza, and that's a no-brainer out there for Barraza. And you see here his athleticism and speed, and he just took, took you know, goes gets first down. He was looking for the contact, turned on the Jets, and didn't even have to throw the stiff arm there. I like the idea of getting him out in space, and especially when you get him against a defensive lineman or a linebacker. He's going to win that matchup every time. And that is a Union Bank tire, excuse me, first and ten. Renner, shotgun, trips tight to the left side. Two receivers to the right. There's the give as they're going to give it to, again to Barraza. And Barraza stuffed to the line of scrimmage. No game there. Brogan Paxton, 5'8", 205 junior, comes in and just cleans up the place there. I love the intensity the defensive lineman from Allen East. They're not going to back down. They're outmanned across the front line, but the way they're playing hard right now. I think Allen East is playing with a lot to prove. They remember sure. a year ago, that I think they didn't play their best game in Columbus Grove yeah, in what was not. a big Northwest Conference game so far. Well, they, they have come yeah. to play. Ended on a sour note against Coldwater in the playoffs, and they, they, want, they want some redemption. A lot of people have ended on a sour note against <laughs> Coldwater in the playoffs. Touche. <laughs> as Renner <laughs> fires it out right side, that one's going to be a little high for the intended receiver as he wanted to get it to Steck Schulte, the junior receiver over on the far side of the field, but it'll be incomplete. Brings up. Now what will be third down and ten. Well, he's got a lot of weapons out there. Zane Steckshaw and Zach Reynolds. And boy, they get him on the outside and get him in space. That's exactly what they want to do. So here we are, third and ten. And I said it earlier, got to stay out of third and long. And uh, let's see what Allen East does here. If they come with full pressure and go man in the backfield. Or if they sit back in a zone because they've been burned twice now by, you know, trying to go that route. So let's see what they do. 53 seconds separating us from the end of the first quarter. Renner gets set. Barraza behind him in the shotgun. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Fake the give to Barraza. Rolling out to the right, firing, and that is caught and brought down. Going up high to get that is Zach Reynolds. They've dialed number six a couple of times tonight for big plays. Yeah, you see what Zach Reynolds does here. He goes across the field in space, and he has to take a linebacker out there with him, and that's a mismatch every time. And Zach Reynolds makes a heck of a catch. And you look where Barraza puts it in the only space he can. Fresh set of downs once again Renner, for Columbus me. Grove. Yeah, they, that was a really well-thrown ball. This will be the seventh play of the series coming up now. Renner takes a snap. There's the pitch left side. Barraza. Barraza sees the wall blue. That might have been a block in the back. Uh, it didn't even matter. I, I don't know how the official did not call that a block in the back. He was right there in front of him. You're right, Doug. That was as plain as the nose on my face. And I, you see it right here on replay. You watch it. Kudos to Braylon Kimmett for really <laughs> – hey, thanks for the assist, I suppose. But he kept his head up and kind of controlled where that dive was going and ends up a six-yard loss. That's going to do it for the first quarter. We played 12 minutes, and we're no closer to determining a winner in this one. Scoreless after one here in Allen East. Back after this on WOSN. And welcome back. As we return to Allen East, tonight's game of service of Hawker Drywall. Our scoreboard sponsored by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit HawkerDrywall.com to see how we can help you. Also, our replays tonight brought to you by Eastside Insurance. They're made possible, again, by Eastside Insurance, part of the Wayne Insurance Group. Well, we've played 12 minutes. We are scoreless on the Hawker Drywall scoreboard. Doug Jenkins along with Danny Holbrook with you on WOSN this evening in a big Northwest Conference game. I mean, this one's going to play into how this conference ends up. And so far, we've seen two teams try some things. They've risked a few things. They've had some gains. But again, I just get back to that middle of the field right now. In the middle of the, the, uh, the line, is it's, it's a tough way to go. We're going to see, and as soon as I say that, of course, that's where Columbus Grove goes. We'll get about three yards, but it's going to bring up third down and long here. Well, it's a chess match right now. Both teams trying to feel each other out. No, neither of them went for the big play. They put the ball in space a little bit. Groves let their athletes handle it a little more. Alan East has got the quarterback on the edge trying to get him out in space. So we're going to see what happens, and penalties are going to play a huge part in turnovers also. And we've seen several penalties already. Yeah, but unlike Grove. Unlike yeah. Grove, yeah. I think they've had four total 
tonight, two offensively, two defensively. But big ones, big 15-yarders. Yeah. And Allen East had one uh, on a punt return that brought it back a little ways, too. Brenton Renner takes the snap, rolling to his left, and now fires. And that one is incomplete, nearly picked off. Diving for it was Carson Klum. Well, wherever the football is, Carson Klum's going to be there. He's that good an athlete. And you saw on the replay here that Renner got a lot of pressure from the far side, and they really got after it. Some nice pressure by number 54 for Allen East. And that is Brogan Paxton. We mentioned him earlier, and he's just beaten his man several times tonight. So great job by that young man. And that's going to bring up fourth and 13 now for Columbus Griffith. They're going to keep the offense on the field as they're kind of in no man's yeah, land here. exactly. Too, too short of a field to really punt. Too long of a field goal opportunity. Gunner takes the snap. Has some time. Fires out into the flat. He's got a man. And... That's going to be to Landon Schrader. Schrader, this third reception on the season, will be short of the first down. And Allen East will come back out onto the field. Yeah, not a bad play, Doug. It, they didn't pick up the first down, but you've got them way back on, on their side. So, you know, it, you, you can't punt there. You're going to get the ball at the 20. So I like the play call. Yeah, they're going to take I mean, Alan East takes over at the 21-yard line, make it the 21-yard yeah, the line. That's... Essentially a punt that goes into the end zone at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Allen East will have another look at it. This will be their third possession of the evening. And we talked about it earlier. They've moved the ball all night. Hershberger with two backs in the backfield now motioning out. And that's a pitch, actually. Pardon me, it's Hershberger who takes the pitch after it was Trey Hensley who was in the backfield and I think took the snap. I think Hensley's calling the sniff signals right now. Yeah, Trey Hensley was in the backfield there, and he kind of gets the uh, the shotgun snap, and he gives it over to Hershberger, and they're doing everything they can to get the ball in Hershberger's hands. I like the play call, and I like him mixing and matching here. They've got two athletes who can really move the ball in the backfield this way. Hensley, this time going to keep it himself. Turns the corner on the left side, and he is brought down near first yard down yardage at the 30-yard line. And Trey Hensley coming into the game in the second quarter. We didn't see him in the first quarter, and he's a little bit of a different dimension here, and he's really doing a nice job of moving the ball down the field. Get on the tackle there. Shep Halker. Also, oh, yeah. yeah, it looks like Antonio Gray. He's going to be around the ball quite a bit. There's the pitch. Oh, it's a gadget play. Here's the pitch down the field, and it is incomplete. Intended for Carson Klum. Nobody was fooled on that play. Tonight. No, they weren't. They yeah. that was scouted well. Yeah, Zach Reynolds stayed on that, and you see him down there. I, and I, I, that was an ill-advised pass thrown into double coverage, but you saw Zach Reynolds, and uh, Carson Klum ended up being the defensive back on that play. So there is one turnover in this contest. Allen East had an interception in the end zone on their very first drive of the game. And that's going to bring up fourth of one. Mustangs are going to show a punt. It's a big punt. Nice, it's going to be nice. over the return man in Zach Reynolds. Reynolds going to back off, and that's going to be downed by the Mustangs at about the 30, or excuse me, the 29-yard line. So a three and out there. Well, not too bad for starting at the 20-yard line and, and giving them the ball back on about the 27-yard line. So, uh, all in all, not a bad series for Allen. He didn't score and didn't move the ball much, but uh, considering what could have been. This will be the third possession for Columbus Grove now. We're now accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN. Dot TV slash John Reed. And off right side and nothing doing that way as Barraza gets tangled up in a wall of blue jerseys. 52 gauge Wireman did a nice job of shooting that gap and ends up grabbing him around the waist and taking him down. So second and 10 coming up now for the Mustangs. I think this defenses have gotten stronger as the sun has set tonight. Yeah, I think you're right, Doug. Both these defenses look outstanding right now, and uh, it's going to be a defensive struggle. Runner takes a snap. Quick throw, and that one is broken up. 
And again, it's Carson Carson. Klum, but he, a step earlier, is perhaps running to that northern end zone. You watch how he plays this, Doug. He is right on the spot, and he can't get to it, so he knows he has to get his arm around the uh, offensive player. What a great job by that young man without interfering. He knew exactly what he had to do, with, so he did not get the interference call. That's a couple times tonight we've seen him make a play like that. And that'll bring up third down and 10 now for Columbus Grove. Either team able to crack the scoring so far as the defenses are settling in. Renner fakes the give to Barraza, rolling out to his left. Gonna fire and he's got a man, but it is incomplete in and out of the hands of A.J. Schaefer. Schaefer has six receptions and a touchdown on the season, but unable to bring that one in. And now we're exchanging three and outs. Well, that was all, you give the credit to this to Keaton Lehman. Keaton Lehman gets defensive pressure on Renner, and he forces the bad throw. A great job by that young man. Yeah, he was coming in a hurry. Broken packs and was in the backfield again. Second time we've seen him back there causing some issues. And it's another punting situation for Columbus Grove. I feel Doug, like you, you look at both these teams and it looks like the speed. Hang on. Oh, what, what we got here? I guess we were <laughs> shuffling through our paperwork. There was a penalty called. Personal foul against the Mustangs. And that's it. That's going to wow. be an automatic first down as it moves the ball up to the 44-yard line. Neither of us saw that. I, I didn't see anything on the replay that would indicate that. I didn't see the flag come out, but that'll be the case, and Columbus Grove keeps their drive alive. Fired into the flat. Barraza has it. Barraza trying to turn the corner, and he'll be pushed out of bounds in about the 48-yard line for a pickup of four. Now he's right there. He's real lucky they didn't get a face mask on that play because we see this replay as he comes across the middle and he gets to the Allen East sideline. All right, let's take a look at the penalty here on the east side insurance agency replay. I'm wondering if maybe they got to the quarterback late. That's all I, can I think that's probably what happened right after he, he let go of it. And Renner going to take the snap here on second down and five after the give to Barraza. Now that one sailed in. That one oh my, that could have been about yeah. as horizontal as a pass can get if it had been just a smidge back to the left. That's a backward pass. Yeah, we both thought the same thing. And let's take a look on this replay. And I'm going to see where the line of scrimmage is and where that ball goes out. Take a look here in a moment as it comes up on the replay here. The that's very close. So about the 40-yard line. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be forward, but by about a yard <laughs> and a half. half. Couldn't, yeah. couldn't be any closer. Timeout. Great job by the Point replay crew there. Absolutely. Timeout going to be taken. We will take a timeout as well. Timeout's brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Scoreless here in Allen East. We're back with more on WOSN right after this. Welcome back to Allen East. Tonight's game of service of Metzger Financial. Our timeouts brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. That's a nice fire out into the flat one. It is picked off. Stepping in front of that one is Braylon Kimmett. And we've exchanged turnovers now. Allen East had one early. Now Columbus Grove has given it back to the Mustangs, and the Mustangs will have a short field in front of them. I'll tell you what, Doug, if we had to pick a defensive unit right now that's winning this game, it would be the Allen East secondary. They are doing a tremendous job of deflecting passes, and there they get a turnover, a huge turnover. They bail out what they did earlier with that foolish penalty. Yes, they do, as the defense comes up big. Now Columbus Grove will have to, well, it looks like he stepped out of bounds on the other side of the 50-yard line, but they'll still a really good it. field position. 47-yard <laughs> line, their own 47 for the Mustangs. Dropping back to pass, Hershberger fires across the middle, got him, man. Absorbing the hit is Keaton Lehman, the senior receiver, and that will move Alanis deeper into Columbus Grove territory. Grove sitting back in his zone defense, and you saw Hershberger. He finds the hole in the zone defense, and he just lays it across the middle, and they do a great job of playing pitch and catch there. Hershberger takes the snap, and there's the give to hole behind the right side of the line. The big guy got to carry it across the 30-yard line, gets about two yards on the carry. Doug, you feel like whoever scores first has got a real <laughs> chance of winning? Good grief. It's going to be big. It's <laughs> a nice tackle coming off of a block there. 
made by Dylan Bryan. And I love the conscious effort from Allen East to stay away from those, those linebackers. They're going to the edge, and they're going to top over top of them. Some pressure coming. There's the throw, and that is in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. They were looking for Joe Hole there. And that's going to be incomplete. It'll bring up now third down and eight. Hershberger put just a little bit too much spice on that throw. He just really wound up, and you see here, he just let it go, and it was too much for Joe Hole to handle. Saw Columbus Grove show blitz, but it was picked up pretty well by the Allen East offensive line. They did. They did a great job of doing that. Both these teams are really well coached. I mean really well coached. Trips wide out to the right. Two receivers to the short side of the field on the left. QB draw. And Hershberger lost the ball. Columbus Grove has it. Second Allen East turnover. No, the official saying oh, he was say down. Was down? The official saying he was down. They're saying he was down. Boy, we got to watch this one. So Hershberger takes off. And Ooh. as knee looked like it was down. Can we slow that down anymore? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, oh, great job, guys. Great job. Look at this. Look at this. See here. See if the ball's out before the knee's down. No, the ball's out before the Ooh, knee's down. The ball is close. out before the knee's down. And timeout going to be taken. We will take a timeout as well for Metzger Financial. And again, on the Hulker drywall scoreboard. Still scoreless with 7.37 left in the first half. Back with more on WOSN. Welcome back to Allen East here on WOSN. Scoreless between the Allen East Mustangs and the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. You're on homecoming for the Mustangs. Allen East going to go for it here on fourth and five ball on the 25-yard line of the Bulldogs. Hershberger throws it out, and that is going to be incomplete and a turnover on down. So what could have been a turnover on a fumble of play earlier ends up being a turnover on downs. No harm, no foul. And Columbus Grove will get the ball back with 7.33 remaining in the half. Yeah, not real crazy about that play call. They didn't have a lot of blockers out there on the side, Doug. And I really like the idea of getting Hershberger out in space and letting him create. Hey, look, if he gets five yards and he runs the ball, great. If he doesn't, you're, you're no worse off. But, uh, boy, you take a lot of chances there. And I, I'm just not real, real crazy about the play. And I'm not going to, hey, look, I'm not coach. I'm not coach. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you go back to the, uh, the, the replay on the fumble. We had a right. good look at it. And, uh, I go back to how I think they should do replay in like all oh, major yeah. sports now. Is yeah. if you can't tell within 30 seconds of it looking go. at a full speed yeah. call stands, and that's kind of where it was. It was so close on it. Uh, and there's the give to Barraza. Barraza gets a couple of yards on the left side of the line. Not a whole lot of room to move yeah, around though, and that'll bring up second down and about eight. You watch Barraza every time he touches the ball, Doug. I feel like he can go the he can distance. Go. He's so athletic, and what a great job by the Allen East front seven. They're doing a terrific job up front. I saw him do it to Liberty Benton earlier in the season. Just yeah. every time you thought LB was going to pull away in that game, which ultimately ended sure. at the end of Whittem, but Barraza would come down and move the chains, find the end zone. He was a big problem. Second and seven now. Give this uh, on the delay to Barraza, but Allen East has had his number tonight. They've been very disciplined up front and, and holding their assignments to keep yeah. him in check. There's Landon Poling, the 5'11", 250-pound junior, and watch him bust through the line. He gets hold of Barraza, and he's going nowhere. Yeah, it's hard to shake him off no matter how much time <laughs> you spend right. in the weight room. That's, right. and that's going to bring up third and five now for Allen East. Feels like an AFC North game, or an <laughs> NFC North game. <laughs> like Browns and the Steelers, Packers, Vikings. If it's anything like last uh, last week's Bengal Steelers game, we'll get a <laughs> field goal off the upright. <laughs> Doink. Yeah. Get a lengthy overtime. There's the pitch left side, Barraza, and there he was able to get past one defender. He's going to be close to first down. I think he's got it as he's across the 35-yard line to about the 36. Yeah, motion in here. It's out on the edge Watch here. him slide around this first tackle attempt right here. Just a quick sidestep, and then wrapping him up, Jacob Hershberger gets the job done. He finds the sticks, and he gets right to where he needs to be. Great job by that young man. That's, a, that's the kind of back you want. Somebody knows exactly what he needs to do to get that, and the extra effort he gives. And that's why he's going to be a great back for the next few years for Grove. Under center this time goes Brenton Renner. He's got three backs in the backfield. One receiver out to the right. Haven't seen this formation yet. Give us to Barraza. They're going to get some blockers in front of him on the left side. He's going to be brought down at the 40-yard line for a pickup of about three. Well, yeah. you wondered when they were going to do that, Doug, because they've had him in a single set back the entire night, and now they put a fullback there with him, and he's got two guys leading the block, and it didn't work out well. But I like the uh, transition, make Alan East move those linebackers just a little bit. 
Well, you talked about it in the pregame. This game's going to be physical, and yes. that's going to be a physical style of football if they want to continue with that set. It looks like they will here. Three backs in the backfield. Renner lines up under center. Give to Barraza. Makes a nice move. Ready. No, pardon me. Over to the left side is running free is going to be Lawson Magna, and he is off into the races and into the end zone. Touchdown, Columbus Grove. Lawson Mag turns on the Jets as Allen and East just caught in his wake There's trying to chase him down. Flag on the field, Doug. Oh, yes, there is right there at the 39-yard line. And that looks like it's coming back because Lawson Mag looks really upset, <laughs> and he did a great job. Turn on the Jets here. Yeah, it's going to be a hold. That'll bring it back. It'll be enough for a first down, but it will wipe six points off the board. But how many times have we seen it tonight? Critical situations, yep. both teams, and it's so unlike both these teams are so well coached. And there was no need for a hold there. He had the space. He was gone. Well, maybe that's why he had the space. I, know, I think right there, as you saw, leaning on, the, I think it was Zane Steckschulte maybe who got yeah. whistled for it. But does... Make it a first down, and for Union Bank, of course, Union Bank is committed to you. 4.54 remaining here on the Hulker drywall scoreboard. Still scoreless after that touchdown comes off the board. Renner under center. And <laughs> that time. <laughs> he got thrown up in the air, yes, Doug. Did, did you see that? Lawson Mag has been the ball carrier the last two times, and he got upended. Trying to see who got underneath of him there. Tried to jump the tackle. Number eight yeah. for the Mustangs. Joseph Hole. Joseph Hole came in and hit him below the waist and just tipsy turvy dunkaroo up and down. That's I don't know what that means. That's one where yeah, I, <laughs> I've rarely been in a tipsy turvy dunkaroo yeah, situation well, to yeah. to really have any sort of assessment on it. It happened to me. <laughs> I went with it. But it was the <laughs> I usually do play by play, Doug, all yeah. right? <laughs> Renner going to toss it right side. Oh, wow. And Allen East pumps that one down in a hurry. Landon Schrader nowhere to go as the Stings were on the hunt on that left side. Watch what, him come in here. Yeah, what a great job. Once those uh, defensive linemen got up there, the linebackers came in and cleaned it up. And Doug, if I had to ask you right now who's winning the line of scrimmage, I couldn't tell you. I really couldn't because both it's these teams. Are, exactly, exactly. <laughs> this, is, this is great football. <laughs> I mean, this is, I mean, you called it at the beginning. It was going to be physical, and it's going to come down to mistakes. But so far, both teams have been able to survive right, their right. mistakes. That's, that's a great point, Doug. Renner drops back to pass, fires, and that one's going to be short. Yeah, you saw him. He got, he got on his back foot, Doug, and if he just stepped into it, he probably would have had a better chance. And we'll see the replay here. He stood back on that back foot and tried to fling it across there. And that's, that's a tough throw for, for, for big, tall quarterbacks, let alone someone of this kid's size. Shep Halker was the intended target. And he just didn't get everything into it. And on the coverage there for Allen East was Jackson Thompson again. There's that guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's that guy, Jackson Thompson. Been around the football quite a bit tonight. 3.25 left in the second quarter. And it's a punting situation coming up on the eighth play of this series for Columbus Grove. That one angled away from the return man. And that one takes a hard right and out of bounds at about the 17 yard, or excuse me, at the 17-yard you know, line for Allen East. Well, he, here's a situation, Doug. I believe Allen East gets the ball in the second half. Yep. Correct? Yeah. So, so you got 318 no, to go. No, pardon me, Columbus Grove. Columbus Grove. Yep. Okay. So you got 318 to go here. If Allen East can put together a lengthy drive, use the clock, and get anything on the board, get some momentum going into halftime. Well, TV 44 is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. Would you donate $40 to thank you as a thank you for 40 years of local broadcasting in the region? Donate online at wtlw.com slash donate. Call 419-339-4444. Pass out to Hole. Hole's got some blockers in front of him. He's out across the 30, still on his feet, and finally ridden out of bounds into the Mustang bench, just shy of the 40-yard line. I love that play, Doug, at every level. They let the offensive or the defensive lineman get through. They get their guys out in space. They're blocking for him. They get it to an athlete, and he does the rest. That's a big guy to bring down in yes, space, too. Absolutely. Did a nice job with the open area. And moves the chains for a Union Bank first down. There's the pitch right side, but the ball is loose. And jumping on top of it, Joe Hole there. Oh, fortunate to get back on top of that one, I think. 
He's looking upfield before he secured the ball, and that'll be a loss of about three on the play. Yeah, of all the turnovers we've seen tonight, that one could have been the most costly because of the field position it would have gave Grove. So a nice job by Joseph Holt. Again, you're first and 10, and now you are you know, you lose five, six yards, so now you're at second and 14 or 15, so you're putting yourself in a hole when you really need to be moving the ball. Playing behind schedule. Exactly. That's a great way to put it. Still no score. Two and a half left. Hertzberger. Ball got loose. He's going to have to fall on top of it. And again, the Mustangs put the ball on the ground. And again, they back up quite a bit more this well, time as it's going to yeah. be third and a mile. Third, you're going to be third and 20-some. And if I'm doing this, I'm, I'm taking a lot of clock away right now and, and using that play clock. And I, I'm not doing anything dangerous right here to turn the ball over. Your kids, you know, two plays in a row where you've lost 15 to 20 yards, you know, just regroup and, and get yourself in a position where you can punt and pin them deep. And you got two timeouts left for both right. teams. And I think looking at that east side insurance replay, I think a Columbus Grove player got enough of a hand on the ball as he came flying by to pry it loose there. Right. And they're going to keep it on the ground as they give it to, to Hole, Jack Hole. Gets a couple of yards, but like you said, they're going to play it safe there. The Allen East defense has played well. And there's just a short amount of clock remaining here at uh, Goodwin Field in this first half. So why not punt it away? Yeah, we saw Jacob Hershberger punt earlier, and he does a nice job. And if he gets a bounce, especially on this turf, they could pin him deep. And uh, with 1.42 to go, I don't think Grove's going to sit on the ball. I really don't. They'll try to attack the end zone, but at least give yourself a chance to pin him deep. Columbus Grove going to take a timeout. We'll take a timeout, and we'll stay here, actually, as we take a look at the Northwest Conference standings. And there you have it right there. Allen East and Columbus Grove tied with Bluffton and Lipsick at the top of the, uh, the standings. But three and one overall uh, for Allen East and Columbus Grove. Bluffton and Lipsick having good seasons as well. Crestview, the AP number 15 team, that they have a loss in conference, obviously. Uh, they stand at three and one. Then you've got Spencerville, Delphus, Jefferson, and Ada all tied with Crestview for fifth place. I think this is going to be an interesting yeah. year in the NWC. You look at those four top teams plus Crestview. Uh, there, there's going to be a lot of battles here the rest of the way home. Well, Doug Crestview came in here last week, and Allen East, you know, beat them pretty good, 29-12. Yeah. Huge win for the Mustangs. So this, again, I don't want to stress the importance, but this is a huge game. Definitely is as we get the punt away. Oh, that is a banger. Barraza at the 30. Barraza at the 40, cutting it to the right side. Dive four gets to the 45-yard line. Well, anytime he makes that first guy miss, you start to hold your breath because <laughs> something special could happen. He's electric, Doug. You watch him make guys miss, and he gets in the open field. And on this turf, he looks even faster. He is, he is a really dynamic playmaker for the dogs. Pretty good field position for Columbus Grove. Now, they did use one of their two remaining timeouts to stop the clock there and give themselves some time to work with. They'll have one timeout remaining. Well, obviously, you know, last year I'd have said if you can get across the 50, <laughs> you let your place kicker take over because <laughs> they had point. one of the best in the state of Ohio, but now he's at Marshall University. So uh, we'll see what they got. They got a freshman that they were really high on, uh, and they believe he's going to be really good, but let's see what they do here. Renner rolls, fires downfield, and that is incomplete intended for Barraza at about the Mustang 47-yard line. And you see what they did there, Doug. They rolled the quarterback out to give him options, but they stayed on the sidelines, and he kept the ball high. That way, if it goes out of bounds, the clock stops, and the receiver can catch it and step out of bounds. So I like that play called stay out of the middle. It has been very rare tonight yeah. that a receiver has seen any sort of green I know, I know. to make just a yeah, I think that first long completion for Columbus Grove was really yeah. the one time where you could say a receiver was just wide open. Uh, I feel like Carson Clum's going to walk me to my car tonight. He's guarding <laughs> everybody, you know. That's good. We had to park a ways away. Yeah, so right. you could have an escort out there. Brenton Redder to throw. And that one oh is my. bobbled and incomplete. It looked like Barraza had it momentarily, but unable to bring it in. you got to be kidding me, Doug. He makes this reception, or did he not, or he's out of bounds. or something. Watch this. Over to the sideline. Oh, he, he caught it, but he bobbled it, bobbled so he was it. out of bounds. And again, Jackson Thompson was right there. <laughs> Our man Jackson Thompson. Jackson Thompson's a catcher in baseball, so he's used to covering them. <laughs> you know, he's, he's ready for contact. That's going to bring up third and 10 now with a minute 19 remaining in the first half of action. Renner, shotgun. Got Lawson Mag in the backfield with him. And 
No, pardon me, it's going to be a gift to Schrader. Schrader will get the first down, and that will stop the clock with a minute 12 remaining as Columbus Grove comes to the line in a hurry. So we're seeing Landon Schrader, the six foot, 175 pound senior, does a nice job of finding the hole and picking up a first down. I like the block there by uh, Kylan Mays, really sealed that edge, allowed him to get over to the right side. Fresh set of downs on the Union Bank first down. There's a pass out to the right side to Zach Reynolds, and Reynolds able to force his way out of bounds. He had to wrestle two guys in blue jerseys to get there, and he's going to be right there near first down yardage at about the 35-yard line of the Mustangs. Well, they're staying on the sideline, staying out of the middle, so they're giving themselves a the chance with the clock. 60 seconds left now in the second quarter. Remember, Columbus Grove still has that one timeout in their back pocket. Just kind of depends on if they want to utilize the middle of the field. That's going to be second and one. Just short of the first down. Renner takes a snap. Steps up. He's under pressure. And that one is incomplete into the backfield in a hurry. It was Brogan Paxson. And really made Brenton Renner rethink things in a hurry. <laughs> he did. He, he came out of nowhere. And Renner saw him from the backside. And he tried to flip it out to his H-back. And he, he just overthrew him. It'll make it third down and one. Stops the clock with 54 seconds left. Let's we'll see what the Bulldogs dial up here. Renner takes a snap. The give is going to be to Schrader, and Schrader has enough for the first down, so that'll stop the clock as the chains get reset. Columbus Grove can hang on to that timeout. Now with 50 seconds left in the first quarter on the Hulker drywall scoreboard. Quickly back to the line. There's the throw, and keeping him in bounds. Wow, that was thrown over to Zach Reynolds. Reynolds really trying to fight his way out of bounds, but wrestling him to keep him in play was Hensley. Yeah, and it was a great job of the Mustangs keeping him in bounds. That clock's continuing to run, and they're trying to move the ball Watch up. Watch Hensley here. Oh, he yeah. did step out. The toes got there, but they did not, they call, did it. not call it. Renner going to throw across the middle. Got a man. It's complete. First down yardage into the red zone as he completes it to Zach Reynolds. Zach Reynolds got into space and he got between the linebackers and they're gonna move the ball up right now. Into the Northwest Ohio recycling red zone. Renner takes a snap, fires it out wide to the right. That is incomplete with 12 seconds left. Columbus Grove has a timeout. They've got 12 seconds left in a short field in front of them now as they have it at the 10 yard line. Well, Alan East has got a timeout too. And if I'm Alan East, I take the timeout and regroup my kids a little bit. Let's take a look at that. The big play before the uh, previous play. Nice catch. Yeah, he did a great Boy. job. He got in front of Trey Hensley, and Trey Hensley got a big interception tonight, but he did get in front of him. He kept him on the back side, and he just put the ball right in the middle. Reynolds a pretty good size target. 6'1", 175, comes down with that one. So now it's going to be second down and 10. Columbus Grove trying to get on the board before the close of this first half. Renner rolling to his right under pressure, throws, and that is incomplete. And that'll bring up third down, seven seconds left. You yeah. can run a quick one here before you have to run the field goal team on. I think they're going to bring the field goal team on, though. Well, here's the problem, Doug. If, if what happens, if, if the same thing happens again where Renner gets out in space and has to move around, you're going to eat that seven yep. seconds up. So I like the call here. Get your points and go into the halftime with the lead. And I say that like it's automatic, but <laughs> a field goal kicking in high school football is not automatic. Shell Polker has only attempted one field goal so far this year. He did make it, and I think Alan East going to take a timeout. Yes, they will. We'll take a timeout as well for Metzger Financial. Seven seconds separating us from the end of the first half. Columbus Grove trying to get some points on the board to get this thing started. We're back after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Allen East, our Red Zone sponsor tonight, Northwest Ohio Recycling in Pandora, paying top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, and scrap iron, as well as cars. Call 419-384-3392. Doug Jenkins, Danny Holbrook with you here on WOSN. It's been a defensive struggle between Allen East and Columbus Grove, but Columbus Grove going to attempt what will be about a 27-yard attempt. Hawkers is blocked, and that will ball harmlessly into the end zone. Looking forward to see the replay on this one to see who got a piece. Did, did you expect anything else in this defensive struggle? Here we take a look at the uh, replay. It looks like, oh. I think that's going to be Ethan Woodruff yeah, or Ethan possibly Woodruff. Cade Wireman. That's Cade Wireman Cade who Wireman. came across. Yeah, Cade Wireman just able to get his hand on it. And we remain scoreless with two seconds left. Well, they 
Columbus Grove coaching staff. Here's another look at it. You'll see Wireman come around on the far side here. Is there really what? good pressure by us? They had two guys coming around on the right side. Wireman's just able to dive sideways and get his hand on it. And I'm not real sure, but the Columbus Grove coaching staff came out on the field, and they were really upset about something. And I don't know, maybe they thought they saw one of the kids use another kid to elevate himself, or that's all I could think of. Alanis is going to take a knee, and that will do it for our first half. We are scoreless on the Hulker drywall scoreboard. I knew we expected a physical game. I don't know that we expected a scoreless game at the half, but that's how it stands after two quarters of play. We will take a timeout. Back with more on WOSN. And welcome back to Allen East High School. Doug Jenkins and Danny Holbrook with you. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Dale's Concrete Touchdowns. When we get one, they're brought to you by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Well, Danny, as we mentioned, when we get a touchdown, because we have yet to have any scoring right. in tonight's game, it's been so far a defensive struggle. Well, it's basically trench warfare right now. You know, everything's in the line of scrimmage, and you just get the feeling that if, if one of these teams can get somebody out in space, something big's going to happen. And you saw it earlier. They just had to call the touchdown back. But, yeah. you know, we, I had no idea when we started the broadcast we'd be at nothing at halftime, and uh, you just keep waiting for that big play to happen, and who knows? I, and I said it earlier, I think a turnover or a big play is going to affect the game. Absolutely. Well, we've seen, like you said, one touchdown got called back uh, for Columbus Grove, and also we had the blocked field goal. Right, at the right. very end yeah. of, of uh, the first Huge half. Play. Yeah. Uh, so we are still looking for those first points, but it's been a very physical game. It's, uh, between the tackles, you're not getting much done tonight, uh, but they've been able to pick up. You know, both offenses have been able to pick up yardages and bunches at times, but just not really any sustained drives to take anyone sure. in an end zone so far. Columbus Grove will get the ball going left to right from our vantage point here in the second half to start things off. There's the kick. We are back underway. That one fielded right at the goal line. And there you go. There's the big play that you were talking yep. about as uh, Barraza is on the march down the field. He's at the 30, the 20, and finally going to be brought down inside the 15-yard line. Again, anytime he gets the ball and he makes that first person miss, something big could happen. And Columbus Grove is in scoring position right away. Well, he does a great job of getting out in space, like we said earlier, and he's got speed for days. But I give a lot of credit to Trey Hensley. He did not give up on the play, and he stayed with him, and he got him out of bounds to save a touchdown. And who knows, that could be the play of the game if they don't put it in the end zone. Most definitely with now 14, the ball at the 14-yard line. So Columbus Grove right about where they were before we went to the locker rooms there at the <laughs> halftime. It, it actually looks like we know what we're talking about. We're talking about big plays. <laughs> <laughs> Keep proving us yeah, right, boys. That's right. Brett and Renner under center. We've seen this formation a few times. There's the give to the up man as they give it to Lawson Mag. Mag going to be stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Maybe gets a yard on the lean. Watch this play by Keaton Miller on the inside, number one. He gets submarine and goes down and still takes the play, and he gets blocked by number 50 out there, but he, he makes the play, grabs him on the ankles. Yeah, he's a tough guy. He's kind of yes. like a locomotive. He's he gets moving really in a good. direction. It's really, hard to deter. Really good player. We'll stay back under center here on second and eight. The ball in the red zone. There is the give this time on the right side. And again, tough sledding as Landon Schrader unable to get much. Gets a couple of yards going to the right side. Now they've went up the middle twice here on this sequence of plays. I look for them on third down. I would look for them to use the back of the end zone, and that way you've got enough space between you and that defensive line that if the quarterback has to get out, he can, and he's got space in the end zone to throw the ball. Let's see what he does here. If he throws to the back of the end zone, I'm the greatest. If not, then... <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Renner, the senior quarterback, will stay under center. Three backs behind him. One receiver out wide to the right. There's the give on the right side as they put it in the hands of Lawson Mag. And Mag, I think it'll be short by a couple That's of yards for a first down here. Be short. I, and as I predicted, they ran the ball up the middle there. So it Looks like they're going to keep the offense on the field after the last field goal attempt was Absolutely. blocked. Yeah, I, I like the co play call here. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Renner get on the outside and try to create something. Because it's, you know, you said it earlier, it's really tough between the edges right now. So will we see our first points of the ball game? But inside for just a couple of minutes left 
taken off the clock, I should say, here in the third quarter. There's the give. Again, it's to Lawson. He is stood up, but I don't wow. think he got it. I don't know that he got that. He needed to get to the four and I, looked like he was momentum stopped at the five. You are kidding me. The Allen East front just wow. holds their position. Watch this play, Doug. You talk about getting penetration. They just ate that offensive line from Columbus Grove up. Look at that. And they stood him up, and they called the play dead. And he had to go up high. Yeah. As soon as he's able, as soon as he takes his feet off the turf, he's not able to drive. And Allen East just stopped him right in his tracks. And you saw the Grove offensive linemen. They knew exactly what happened. They walked off the field, did not say anything to the officials. What a great play by the Allen East defense. So after giving up a big kick return to open up the half, Allen East defense steps up, stops Columbus Grove in the Northwest Ohio Recycling Red Zone. And now the Mustang offense back out on the field. There's the give to Jack Hole, and Hole pushing around the right side, gets it to the 10-yard line. I like a little mis misdirection there. He goes running behind the offensive line there and cuts off to the right. And big number 69 for the Mustangs. That's uh, Landon Reisner. Looks like he came up lame a little bit. He was holding his knee out there. Let's hope he's okay. That ends up being a five-yard gain. They're making a four-yard gain, second and six coming up. And again, they're going to go back to hole, hole behind the left side. Got a decent push. Quick will be spotted down at about the 13-yard line. It looks to me like Joel Billings, he told his offensive line, boys, we're going we're gonna to hang our hats on you guys, and you're going to win this ball game for us if that's the case because they're running right up the middle, and they're attacking that uh, middle of that uh, Grove defensive line. Third down and three now for Allen East. Hershberger looks to the sideline. Takes a snap, fires it out into the flat. And that'll get them the first down as they got it into the hands of, I think that was Keaton Lehman that they just shot it over to. And that'll end up being the first down for Allen East. Just a quick play right here. Yeah, each time they've done that, notice the defensive back is playing six, seven yards off. And I'm not real sure why they want to do that other than the fact that they don't, they don't want to get beat deep. Don't get me wrong, but uh, Allen East hasn't thrown the ball down the field a lot tonight. They've thrown a lot of the sideline structure, but nothing else. So back into the shotgun goes Jacob Hershberger. Fakes one give, gives it to Jacob. Hole, hole through, a uh, hole in the middle. And he will be wrapped up in the open field and brought down across the 25 at the 26-yard line. That's a big tackle by Shep Halker. Yeah, that was a great play by Jacob Hole as he gets the misdirection play, and he finds exactly the hole he needs to go through, follows these blocks. And, boy, if that could have been Jacob Hershberger, he could have been gone. And no disrespect <laughs> to Hole, but uh, he's a lot bigger. First and 10 once again, a Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. Again, Allen East will try the interior of the line. And they'll gut out a yard, maybe. Five of the first six plays, they've kept it on the ground, uh, Doug, and uh, really trying to flex their muscles up front. And so far, so good. Well, this game has been humming right along with the game primarily played on the ground tonight. Yes, it has. Hershberger steps away from the line to get the play from the sideline. Now he'll get set with 10 seconds on the play clock. QB draw slipped a little bit, but he'll get the first down as he gets across the 30 to the 31-yard line for a pickup of four. And that was a called play, Doug. You knew that from the start. He just slipped a little bit, or he could have maybe picked up some more yards. He had, I looked at the DBs, and he had single coverage out there, but it didn't matter because it was a run all the way. He slipped a little bit on that cutback. Yeah, In did. on the tackle there is Dylan Bryan, senior defensive lineman for Columbus Grove. We're going to get a flag before this one gets underway. Yeah, We're yeah. going to get a false start. False start. Boy, that kind of stuff just kills you on first and 10. You had a nice drive going, and now you're at second and fifth, or first and 15. And just put you in that hole. 73. So let's say you do get five yards here on first down. You're still second and 10. And the, the penalties have come at oh, the costly. worst yeah. possible times for both teams here tonight. Sure have. You're exactly right. One touchdown came off of the board earlier in this game because of a callback penalty. There's a pass, and hey, there's your five-yard pickup, just like you ordered, Keaton Lehman. <laughs> but again, now you're facing a third down and 10. Well, he played, he paid the price because Tad Coke came across the middle and just laid the wood, and he hit him hard. That's a big Yes, linebacker. he did. That's a big linebacker. I have very few rules in life, but one of them is I don't want to be tackled by yeah. anyone named Tad. That's right, and I don't gonna, want to go across the middle. Tad's going to get you. 
And the pass out into the flat, oh. that is incomplete. And that one thrown a little bit high for Keaton Lehman. And he was knocked away from the ball before he had a chance to secure it. So Allen East is going to have to punt the ball away. Actually, it's going to be third down, so never mind. Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't think they're going to punt on third down. Nah. I don't think. I wouldn't. It's more of a Scott Frost <laughs> move. Uh, <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good point. Uh, and this is being broadcast after Scott Frost was fired. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's a big hit. As uh, Landon Schrader came up and made sure there was no chance at a reception there. So third and ten it is. Hershberger drops the pass. He's going to fire down the left side. He's got a man wide open. Hits him. No, oh, it's dropped. You've got to be kidding Caleb me. Caleb Hopkins perhaps too wide open as he thought he was going to go into the end zone unimpeded but just could not hang on to it. And now oh, Alan East will be forced to punt. That's got to make the Mustang faithful just drop their heads. Caleb Hopkins is wide open. He is in front of his man. Nobody out there and just drops the ball. He had plenty of steps on Antonio Gray. But here's where you know, Jacob Hersberger, I think, steps up as a leader after he's done punting here, and he'll play defense too. But he's going to talk to his receiver and let him know he's still a part of the offense. Yeah, absolutely. There's the uh, bounce on the punt to the 25. Barraza knocked out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. Well, you see it a lot when, when you're that wide open. It is tough, and that young man will bounce right back, and uh, let's hope he continues to uh, be in the game plan for the Mustangs. Well, Columbus Grove dodges a bullet there. Uh, and now the Bulldogs get the ball back for their second possession in the second half. Still no score on the Hulker drywall scoreboard. We've been close a couple of times. <laughs> Last possession by the Bulldogs couldn't get any closer. It was in the red zone, real deep in the red zone. It's been a hard-fought football game. And Renner back in the shotgun now. Three receivers to the left. Renner going to fire that way. He's got his man, got it to Hulker, and Hulker will be brought down after he nearly danced around a tackle. Going to pick up about three through the air. Yeah, nice pursuit by number 24, Brayley Kim, or Brady Kim, Braylon Kimmett, excuse me, and number 16, Cade Wireman. They get out there real quick and uh, hold him to uh, about a three-yard gain, so we're at second and seven now. Inside six minutes, we've played just over half of the third quarter here. Renner, shotgun. Three receivers to the right. There's the pitch as they give it to Mag. Mag turning the corner. Pardon me, that's going to be Schrader. Schrader turns it upfield, brought down at the 45-yard line. Pick up of another three. And there was Brogan Paxton in the backfield. Watch this, Doug. He was right there to make the play, and he just misses. That could have been a huge – if he makes that play, you're looking at third and 15, 16, and really putting Grove back on their heels. Oh, Schrader made a nice move to get around him. Kind of uses did. momentum against him, slides around. Brings up third and five now for the Bulldogs. Here on Allen East's homecoming. Look here to the right side. you got single coverage on the right side. Let's see if he finds him. Yes, you do. Renner takes a snap. It's going to be in a counter play. And turning the corner is Zach Reynolds. Reynolds still on his feet, has the first down into Mustang territory. Across the 40 to the 39-yard line of Allen East. And the Mustang faithful a little bit upset because I think this, the home crowd was wanting a block in the back. We'll see it right here, and let's see how close it was to being that block. Ooh. They had engaged. They had engaged, so he got turned around, yeah. and maybe that's what the officials saw. I think you're correct on that one, and it's going to be a Union Bank first down. I know coaches, some coaches don't like the term bend but don't break defense, but t tonight it's been, it's been valuable. <laughs> been the M.O. both ways. Exactly. Too tight to the line on the right side. They're going to give it to Barraza. Barraza stood up and sent backwards. Barraza's got those high steps. And I don't know, you remember Robert Smith at Ohio State back yeah. in the early 90s? And I'm not comparing him to Robert Smith, but he's got those long strides, and he just he can break it at any time. I've been very impressed with the way Allen East has played oh, him tonight. My goodness. They've they, game plan yeah. for him well. You've seen Lawson, Mag, and, and Landon Schrader, I think, get more opportunities as a result. Well, they're just trying to find the answer yep. out there right on offense. And uh, they credit the Allen East defense. And, uh, but, look, both teams have played a tremendous game tonight. <laughs> it's too bad somebody's going to have to lose this game. <laughs> I don't, but I don't know if they will. <laughs> we can stay at zero all night. After ten overtimes, we will have a victor. <laughs> hey, I'm good with that. <laughs> like, Renner right. rolling out to his left. Got a man. 
Still on his feet, and uh, Hulker is going to be brought down inside the 25 to the 24-yard line as he got wrapped up. And watch this pass by Renner. It is an absolute laser. He puts this on a dime, steps and gets his shoulder square and throws a great ball right behind the defensive back, and he gets him out in space for a nice pickup for the dogs. Well, we saw one earlier where he didn't quite get a step into right, it, and right. he short hopped it kind of in the same type of uh, position there. That time you saw exactly what he's capable of when he, when he does get that foot set. Yeah, once they turn that corner and he get his shoulder square and he can step into it, he's really effective. We're going to get a timeout on the field. We will take a timeout as well. 321 remains in the third quarter on the Hulker drywall scoreboard. And we are still scoreless between Columbus Grove and Allen East. Back after this on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Hulker Drywall and Plastering. Visit HulkerDrywall.com to see how we can help you. Scoreless with 321 remaining in the third quarter here on WOSN. And here's the pass to the right side. That one fluttered out of the hands of Brenton Renner. Intended for Reynolds on the right side. I think that one just slipped out of his I hand. Think so. uh, and, and you know, it, as, as the night goes on, that, that ball may get a little slippery here. We've got a little dew in the air. And uh, not, not, I'm not complaining about the temperature, but. Uh, no, it's uh, actually getting quite nice out. It's very nice. But yeah. you're right. It's it's that time of the evening when you had a humid, yeah. humid day yep. when the temperature starts to drop, the ball gets a little slick. So here we go on second and 10. Renner under center again with that full house backfield. There's the give to Schrader, and Schrader is chased to the left side line, and he is leveled out of bounds. And, and that, Doug, was all made possible by the defensive end who stayed at home and took on two blockers and does a great job. Number 13, Bryce Avery, and everybody comes up. Because Bryce Avery did his job, they got to clean it up on the outside. So, I mean, that's been the name of the game tonight is yeah. being disciplined in your yep. assignment and that's ex I mean that's the payoff right there exactly there's some outstanding defense by both these squads and here you got them third and 13 it's a great opportunity for Allen East runner though takes a snap rolling out to his right He's got time now here comes pressure fires He's going to connect with Reynolds and Reynolds will be brought down again well shy of first down yardage. Back inside the 25-yard line to about the 23 for a pickup of four. And if you're Grove, what do you do here? You, I think you're going to – I would imagine you're going to go for it. I would think so. And they are. Again, they're a little bit further back from where they attempted the field goal that got blocked at the end of the second quarter. So here we go. Offense on the field on fourth and nine. Need to get to about the 14-yard line, a little bit short of the 14. Renner, and that's going to be a flag. And the uh, the right tackle moved. I watched him move. Yep. Big number 71 for the dogs. Oh, moved. my. Ethan Johnson, I saw him flinch, 6'4", 305, and he moved his hips just a little bit. I imagine the offense still going to stay on the field, but the play call going to be quite different now. It is a false start against Columbus and he, Grove. And he didn't move much, Doug, but he moved just enough to catch the official's eyes. Just that flinch will do it. Well, that's been the story of tonight's game, too. It Both sure teams has. have just had these inopportune mistakes at times where they hurt you the most. The amazing thing is, is it hasn't mattered. No, it hasn't. You're right. I mean, you're <laughs> scoreless, but. Who would ever thought we'd say that? Yeah, <laughs> neither team has really been able to capitalize. Renner in the shotgun. Fourth and long. Drops to pass. Has time. Fires out in the flat. Got Barraza. Barraza spun down and. Got to get back the penalty yardage, but no more. Turnover on downs. Allen East will get it back for their second possession here in the second half with a minute 49 remaining in the third quarter. Yeah, we had his man come out of the backfield. Barraza just comes out. He's playing in the tailback position. He just tries to go behind the linebackers, hoping he can get the defensive backs who have been taken out of the picture by the receivers, taken across the middle. But the linebacker stays there and just makes the pay. Bryce Avery was in on that first hit. Nearly got spun off of Barraza. But is able to hang on long enough for the Calvary to arrive. And now Allen East gets the ball back. Well, Columbus Grove defensively averages 13-3 a game, or gives up 13-3 a game. Allen East 19-7. Those are going to go down. <laughs> you <laughs> would I, assume. Unless the fourth quarter is an offensive explosion, those defensive averages are going to look really good tomorrow morning. What a defensive battle it has been as Jacob Hershberger leads the Mustangs back out on the field on their own 23. He's going to roll to his left. 
turns the corner and will be brought down across the 25 out to about the 28-yard line for a pickup of five. Doug, he very rarely on those design run plays, he very rarely doesn't get the blocks he needs. They are so good in their assignments of, t of keeping the block and staying with it. A lot of times in high school football, you'll see kids make the engagement and then back off. The, the Mustangs stay right there with him. Hershberger back to pass, fires near sideline, hook and ladder. And not going to go anywhere after the initial catch was made by Caleb Hopkins. Well, they got the hook part, but the ladder went down instead of up, so <laughs> didn't work. It's tough to do on the uh, tight side of the yeah, field as you're going point. right back out there. But I would assume that was the call because the coaches looked pretty calm over there after yeah. that. Yeah, so they did, pitched it, it back to yeah. a Keaton Lehman. It didn't hurt them. It moved the chains the first down. So Union Bank first and 10. Hershberger takes a snap. Pressure coming, he is hit as he throws, and that is incomplete, and he got blown up on that play. Yes, he did, and he had Caleb Hopkins again. They have found something out there with Caleb Hopkins. The speedster is beating his man every time, Doug. I think that was Kylan Mays who came across on the right side. Oh, he just got lit up. Ooh, right in the sternum. Bring up second down and 10. Hershberger handoff, Joel Hole and uh, Jack Hole, pardon me. And he's going to get it out to about the 40 yard line. Stop shy at the 39. This is some tough physical yards, boy. He, there, there's three people that had a chance at him, and he broke three tackles there. That kid's tough. Now, I wouldn't wish that on anybody running in that defensive line. <laughs> he's tough to bring down with one individual. You have to make sure you wrap him up and get a little help. As Hershberger rolls, he's hit again. That ball is tipped, Ooh. and it is incomplete. Yeah, you saw Hershberger rolling to his right. He throws back about across his body, and he throws in the coverage there. He got away with one there, and he's really got to think about that in the future. When he can get to the sidelines, when all those guys are in the back, in the uh, behind the linebackers, you got to take off around that boundary. Just watching Hershberger a little bit. He's taking a couple of shots here on this possession. Yeah, he has. You're right. And he's, uh, <laughs> he's a tough kid. He's a gamer. He'll be okay. But you, know, you hit the quarterback hard a couple of times. But you put that thought in their head. Hershberger set to punt it away. He doesn't get many breaks either. No, he does not. And he does a great job of punting the ball. It's a nice punt. Barraza calls for the fair catch. Going to come forward, get it at the 28-yard line where Columbus Grove will take over. Still scoreless with 14 seconds left in the third quarter. I haven't looked down the uh, many of the scores tonight around the league, but I have, would venture to say that we are the only scoreless game. <laughs> Yes, and it's, uh, and it's not because of bad play. It's no, because of very good defensive play, maybe some inopportune penalties on both offenses, but defenses have been playing very well, strong. I, I had a friend who's throwing some scores at me, and he said, how's your game? And I texted him at halftime. I said, 0-0, zero, zero, and he said, what's wrong? I said, nothing. The defenses are right. <laughs> I said, nothing's wrong. It's a great game. Runner shotgun. Going to give it to Barraza. Barraza behind the left side of the line, and he is buried nowhere to go Doug, I, I don't know what changes they made at halftime but the defensive line for Allen East is playing so much better right now and not that they didn't play good in the first half but boy they are just really winning the line of scrimmage right now that is the end of the third quarter and we remain scoreless here at the Mustang Corral we'll take a timeout back with fourth quarter action after this on WOSN Welcome back. It's time for the fourth quarter here at Allen East on the Mustangs homecoming. We have yet to score. I'm Doug Jenkins alongside Danny Holbrook in this Northwest Conference showdown. And that's going to be a penalty against Columbus Grove. Another false start. And they've had a couple in their last two series. Yeah, and it just seems like right now that uh, they're, they're tightening up a little bit. And, you know, we're in a 0-0 zero, zero game. But uh, right now you got to stay disciplined and focused. You're backed up right now. So it's second and 17 now. And now we're getting to the point where we've been at, both teams have been able to stave off sure. the mistakes, but now any mistake can be real costly. Renner going downfield, and that is going to be overshot the intended target, Zach Reynolds. But he was covered well there by Trey Hensley, and the ball was thrown deep behind him. Hey, these defensive backs for Allen East, Trey Hensley and Klum, they, they've done a terrific job. Tonight. Even if he gets that ball to him, he's completely – you called it. He was completely covered. I was – it's been the story all game is very few of the, very few passes have gone to a space where there's just been a lot of green for the receiver. 
the defensive backs, linebackers have done a great job in coverage tonight. Well, Renner in the shotgun on third and 17. Two receivers to his right, one to his left. Ball in between the hashes, shaded to the left. Fakes the give, rolls to his right. Now he's going to throw it back out into the flat where he's got Schrader. Schrader makes one man miss, stays on his feet after nearly being brought down, but still not going to be able to get first down yardage as he's brought down across the 30 at the 31 yard line. Kudos to Landon Schrader for making what could have been a loss because the Allen East Mustangs played it great and Landon Schrader being a great athlete picks up the yardage. Nearly lost his shoe pulling away yeah. from uh, look right here, they had him. And he's able to get slippery and get out of it. Now watch here, Doug, this could be a huge big shift in this game. You've got Jacob Hershberger, the elusive back, the quarterback back in punt formation. If he gets a low line drive and gets some speed, he could take it to the house. Here comes the punt. It's going to be a high hanger, and Hershberger going to let this one bounce behind him. Well, does take an Allen East roll, though, and it'll be down at the 34-yard line. They did not want any part of Jacob Hershberger returning that ball, so they kicked to the right of him, and I don't blame him. Probably not a bad idea at all. And a, and a really good punt. So that ended up being an eight-play drive, but no scores for Columbus Grove. No scoring. For Allen East, here's the latest state football poll in Division Three. See, Walpaw Canetta is ranked number 12. Van Wert having a very strong season. They're ranked number 11 in Division Four. Division Five, locally Coldwater, number one. Archbold, number nine. Marion Local, Cary, and Versailles all ranked there in Division Six. And, of course, it's a log jam in Division Seven. <laughs> yeah. New Bremen, Arlington, uh, with that big stunning win over Liberty Benton a couple of weeks ago. You saw Edgerton on the list as well. Uh, lots of good teams in West Central and Northwest Ohio as is the norm. Hershberger throws it out into the left. He's got the screen. Connects with this man as he got it to Jack Hole. And Hole on his feet got to get a first down as he gets across the 45. Nears midfield before being brought down at the 47. That play goes nowhere unless those offensive linemen get out there and do their job, and that's exactly what they did. Jack Hole has to go through some tough sledding to get those yards, but those linemen got out in front of him and did a great job. So now Alanis takes a look at the sideline with 20 seconds left on the play clock. Hershberger takes the snap. There's the give to Hole again, and Hole got hit at the line of scrimmage. He's going to squeeze out two yards, though. And a bulldog slow to get up there. That's Dylan Bryan. Looks like he's okay. Just was on the bottom of the pile. Let's see what happens here. I, I love the way Alanis is pulling those guards and moving them around the offensive line. Be sure to check out our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, all at WOSN.TV. There's the give to Hole again, and Hole this time finds a hole on the right side in between the tackles. That's been a rarity tonight, but he's able to explode forward and bring up what will be about a third and two. Yeah, great job of going between the tackles. You're right, and they are trying to wear that defensive line down, and they're doing a really nice job. And this could be the drive of the game for the Mustangs as they keep continue to keep it on the ground. But we've seen it before where they make a big mistake both sides of the ball. Yeah, that's been the issue tonight is any time any team gets it going, costly flags, a couple of costly turnovers. There's the give to hole again, and he'll get the first down. Right behind the middle of the line. Just dives forward, gets the two yards that he needs. Or the three yards he needs, I should say. And that's first, it's a fed first down for Union Bank. Yeah, he just slides right through there, puts his head down, and gets a tough yard. Hey, we saw those standings earlier, the uh, Division uh, 4, 5, 6 teams, and you saw Van Wert up there. I, and I would be, you know, if I didn't mention Garrett Seawright's call last week of the Van Wert Wapak game, what, oh, what a great last call. Quite the amazing finish uh, there. I texted Garrett right after that game, and I, or uh, the next day when I saw the game, and I said, what a great call you did. He was pretty happy about that. <laughs> First burger with the keeper there. And got good yardage on first down. It's going to bring up second and about two. Yeah, they're just leaning on those tackles right now, and they're shifting in that offensive line. Hershberger's picking up some tough yardage, but uh, and they took the official out on that play. I didn't see that. This will be the sixth play of the possession. It's been four runs, one pass, but it was a short pass. They give us to Hole, and Hole behind the left side of the line. He'll move the chains as he gets 
A pickup of about three on second and two. What we're seeing right now, Doug, is we're seeing offensive uh, push on that line, and they're, they're, not, they're, they're not going backwards. The first half, we saw a couple of losses on plays. They're gaining yards every time now. A really good job by the guys up front in blue. Hershberger shotgun. Give us a hole again. Hole tries to bounce it out to the right side. Tripped up as he crosses the 30. Brought down at the 29-yard line. A nice job by number 52, Kylan Mays, the sophomore linebacker, off defensive lineman, excuse me, does a great job. Six foot 230, and he just gets through that line and makes sure he doesn't get any more yards. Did a really good job sliding off his block yes, to the left did. to make the tackle. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Hershberger taking the snap again. They give us a hole, and he got knocked backwards after he initially got positive yardage. A.J. Schaefer met him there in the gap. A.J. Schaefer, 6'1", 175. He just Watch this collision. Sorry, sorry, 225. Good night, Alice. Hang on to that highlight. Not a yes. lot of people named to knock Jack Hole yeah. back that direction. I don't think that this confrontation's over. Those are two really physical players. Especially the way Alan Eastman is feeding Jack Hole. This time, though, Hartsburg going to keep it himself. Bounces out to the left. He's able to slip out of one tackle. He's going to get close to first down yardage out on the far side of the field. No, he may have picked up the first down I on that extra did. effort. My goodness, that's just all heart right there. Design quarterback keeper bounces it out to the left. He's going to slip out of one tackle. Oh, you saw Schaefer's helmet come off. And it's going to be actually, now he's got his knee went down shy of the first down marker. So it'll be fourth and one, probably a little bit shorter than one yard. Yeah, and this is where I like to see you put your quarterback under center to sneak it. Don't, I, don't, I don't like putting him in a shotgun position right now, but this is what they do. So let's see how it goes. Columbus Grove creeping up to the line. Nine seconds left on the play clock. And Alan East going to take a timeout here and discuss the plan. 6.35 remain in the fourth quarter. We still are deadlocked at zero between Columbus Grove and Alan East. Back with more on WOSN. Instant replays tonight made possible by Eastside Insurance. And again, on the Hulker drywall scoreboard, it is Columbus Grove zero, Allen East zero, but the Mustangs are on the move. I'm Doug Jenkins with Danny Holbrook. For all of the action here tonight, it's been a steady dose of the Mustang running attack on this drive to potentially try and put some points on the board. Yeah, they've leaned heavily on that offensive line, and so far so good as they've got the ball in great field position, trying to run that clock down. Any points right here would be huge, especially a touchdown. You just saw the upcoming schedules come up. Nobody looking ahead <laughs> on the field right now, though. The uh, task at hand square in mind. Hershberger on fourth and one. Jump pass. It is caught. And hung on to, more importantly, by Keaton Lane. No, nope. they're going to say he didn't. They're going to say he dropped the ball. That was a great play, and all he has to do is keep control of the ball, and it looks like, let's take a look here. I thought he had it. Here's the replay. It yeah. did come loose at the very end. What a hit yeah, no. to pry the ball loose. Dylan, or no, I'm sorry, number 20 for the Shep Hawker does a great job of jarring that ball loose. And once again, a long drive pushed away by the dogs. So now there's six and a half left in the game. Still no score. Yeah, we've seen both teams get up and down the field, but once they approach the red zone, neither team has really been in the red zone that often right. tonight. Yeah. But as they approach it, the game has gotten much harder. Now Columbus Grove will get their chance. They'll get it into their playmaker's hand. Barraza tries to turn the corner. But the Mustangs have had Barraza's number all night as he'll get a yard or two there. Doug, does it surprise you on fourth and one the way they ran the ball, that whole series that they chose to pass the ball? I think it, it does me, I'll be honest with you. A little bit. I, you would, Columbus Grove certainly was looking to try and sure. stuff everything up the middle. I think it's just a great play by the linebacker yeah, there. Yeah, you're right, I think, you're right. Uh, the play call yeah. itself was good. I mean, the design was great, and they had the play. Sometimes it comes down to just that one guy making that one play in the big spot, which is what happened there. Second down and seven now for the Bulldogs. 
Fires it out into the flat, and that went backwards for a yard. Yeah, that's going to make it third and about eight or nine, so a great job by the Mustangs of staying home and just making a great play. And this is a huge play right now. You've got them backed up in third and nine. But boy, if they can stop them here, they're going to get the ball in great field position with not a lot of time on the clock. Cade Wireman and Trey Hensley doing a nice job making a tackle out in space. We are inside six minutes in this fourth quarter. This game has just flown by. Renner takes a snap. He's got time, fires to the near side, and that's going to be short. Just didn't get settled in the pocket, and it will be incomplete intended for Shep Halker. That's going to be a three and out. Well, Bryce Avery got in front of the ball, and he jumps up. You look here. He gets his hand up, and he gets, I'm sure, in front of the receiver's view, and it had to determine. It was it was on the money. He just had to come up and pick it up, and it just a little, little short. So now the Columbus Grove Bulldogs are going to have to punt from inside their own 10. They got a dangerous return man back. They avoided him last time. Yes, and they did. Jacob Hersberger. It's a high snap going up to get it, though, and sent it away. That one's going to be short. Oh, and again, they keep it away from the Mustangs, but it takes a Mustang roll. There's a flag on the. Oh, no, they just marked the ball. Excuse yeah, me. Allen East is going to start in friendly territory on the Columbus Grove side of the field at the 47 yard line. Well, here, here we go, Doug. We got five minutes to play in the fourth quarter. And, and let's be honest, the winner of this game is in control of the NWC for, for now. And I'm not saying they're going to win the whole thing, but, boy, it will go a long way. So this is what we call a victory drive if Allen East can do this. Boy, if the rest of these big games of the NWC play out <laughs> like they did tonight, they're going to yeah. be very competitive. Well, these uh, are just two great programs. Yeah. It, it, we could not got better teams. And, uh Anyway, they could play this game 10 times and they could go back and forth. Hershberger leads the Mustang offense back out on the field again. Three receivers to his right, one to his left. He's got one man in the backfield with him. That's Keaton Lehman. Takes the snap. Actually, it's Hole. He's going to fire downfield. He's got a man in stride, but it is overthrown and incomplete intended down the left sideline for Caleb Hopkins. Every time they've went long, it's been to Caleb Hopkins. They know something. That young man must have a lot of speed because he's getting behind the secondary, and he put it out there for him. He just overshot him just a little bit. Well, you like to see them go back to him. Of course, he had the drop Absolutely. back in the third quarter. You know, like you said, I mean, they've got a matchup that they're like. They're going to continue to feed him. Yeah. We saw a lot of runs on the last Allen East possession. They only have one timeout remaining, and we're inside five minutes. So it might air it out a little bit more. Here they go. And they are going to complete that to Keaton Lehman. And, Doug, that was a huge play because that puts it at third and manageable. Now you're third and two. you got all kinds of options here. You get him on the outside. You can throw the ball there. And now you're going to go for it on fourth down because you're Almost on the second. Almost definitely. Absolutely. So two plays to get two yards. I like the chances. Jack Hole in the backfield with Hershberger. Hershberger going to take off and run on his own. He's got the first down still on his feet. Slipped around. Oh, oh my. He's got space. He's at the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Mustangs. 4-18 remaining in the fourth quarter, and we have our first touchdown of the ball game. Jacob Hershberger, we called it all night when he got into space. He just beat him to the end zone. What a great play call right there. He gets past the linebackers, and once he's in the clear, he's gone. Jacob Hershberger with the big touchdown run for Allen East. Watch him slide by that tackle right there. Two tackles, he's slippery in space. And it is 6-0 now on the Hulker drywall scoreboard. And now in for the point after will be Jacob Pinks. No, oh, pardon me, it's going to be uh, Braylon Kennedy. The lefty puts it up, and that one's going to end up at the concession stand. And it is 7-0 in favor of Allen East. We'll take a timeout back after this on WOSN. Touchdowns on WSN presented tonight by Dale's Concrete and Decorative Stamping and Lipstick for all your commercial and residential concrete needs. Don't worry, Dale, we didn't forget about you. It just <laughs> took a while to get there. 4-17 remains in the fourth quarter. Allen East with the 40-yard scamper as it was Jacob Hershberger to the house to make it 7-0 on the Hulker drywall scoreboard. And big play, finally broke it open. <laughs> yeah, we've been calling for it all night, and Jacob Hershberger uh, might be the best athlete on the floor for both teams, and he does his thing and gets into space and takes it to the house, and nobody's going to catch him. Now, if you're Columbus Grove, you don't have to be one-dimensional here. You've got 4-17, you've got a timeout, you've got plenty of time to tie this thing up. 
Most definitely, there's the kick. They're going to keep it on the ground. The up man will field it and fall down at the 31-yard line. Well, Hershberger's a game-breaking type of player, but Columbus Grove came to Allen East tonight with a couple of their own. Well, so they, they, look, this yeah. game far from over. It's, it, you're right. It's far from over, and they've got – plenty of athletes to get out and get in space and tie this whole thing up. And interestingly enough, if they get a touchdown here, hey, who knows who says they don't go for two. That's a good point, the way this game has gone tonight. I feel like the band is right up here in the press box with us. I love it, the pageantry of high school sports right here on WOSN on full display. Got a snare drum right behind my head. So here we go. We'll see what Brenton Renner and the Columbus Grove offense are able to come up with, and can they find an answer? Renner fires it into the flat. He's got his man. And there's a couple of missed tackles, but eventually moving forward. Well, if you're Allen East, you don't want to get lazy on defense, and, and he did a great job of breaking some tackles out there. And if he doesn't get taken down by the last guy, he, he's going to take it to the house. And Zach Reynolds did a nice job making some people miss here in space. Good block there on yeah, the interior, yeah. too. As he got upended, so now it'll be second down and five. Follow the 37-yard line of Allen East. Drops the pass, fires downfield, and it's picked off! And sliding down with the ball is Carson Klum. He's been around it all night in the air, and the Mustangs come up with a huge turnover. Carson Klum sits back in center field. He watches the pass come. He cuts in front of the receiver and does a great job of securing the ball and doesn't try to do anything foolish. He gets down. He doesn't try to make something happen, and he secures the game maybe for the Mustangs. The ball might have been thrown just a little bit behind the target. Carson Klum makes them pay for the mistake with an Allen East interception. Now you're at 338. If you get a first down here, you start Columbus Grove, forcing them to use their timeouts. You've got to get a couple first downs. This game is far from over. 7-0 is the score in favor of Allen East. A big touchdown run followed by a big interception. Of Hershberger and crew back on field. They're going to give it to two. Jack Hole and Hole. Plows forward, he's going to get a timeout called after he gets a couple of yards with 331 that, remaining. And that's exactly what you want to do. You want to force them to use all their timeouts. Now, timeout, and people say, well, why do you want to use – look, if they get the ball back, they're, they're one-dimensional. They're throwing the ball every time. They're going to the sidelines trying to get out of bounds. So you pretty much know how predictable they can be. Absolutely. Well, the free WOSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WOSN. Search WOSN in the App Store or on the Android Play Store. So tomorrow on WOSN at 3.30, we'll have the replay of the Brian Delta football game. And you're going to want to tune in at 6.30. Not that you don't want to tune in at 3.30. <laughs> right, right. Catch that. Make it a big yeah. day. If it's 6.30, yeah. St. Mary's and Van Wert. We've been following that score that all is, night, yeah, and an you will be impressed with the outcome there. Then at 9 o'clock, Coldwater and St. Henry, a couple of MAC rivalries hey, getting it on. We'll have that for you tomorrow night at 9 on WOSM. Hershberger rolling to his left, goes to turn up field, and he'll be swallowed up after a gain of one on the left side. Columbus Grove going to burn another timeout with 3.23 remaining in the fourth quarter. Next week on WOSN, Bishop Hartley taking on LCC Sunday at 6. Then Tuesday at 8 o'clock, we have the Vince Poles Marching Band Spectacular. And Wednesday at 8, Columbus Grove taking on Botkins in girls soccer. Next Friday, some good ones for you. 5 o'clock, St. Henry New Bremen Mac Volleyball. You can definitely want to catch that one. 6.45 live, Elina taking on Defiance in the Western Buckeye League. And at 10 o'clock, it's the Sports Reports. Also next week on WSN, Marion Local versus Versailles, number one versus number seven coming into this week on WTLW. Lipsick will take on Columbus Grove in a big Northwest Conference matchup. St. Henry and Minster in the MAC Saturday at 6.30. That St. Henry and Minster volleyball game is sometimes more physical than any game we <laughs> have, any <laughs> football game, I'm telling you. So, so this is huge, Doug. I didn't mean to cut you off here. If they, if they can force that third time out here and pick up a first down, it, it really will go a long way in helping them secure this win. That is going to compress the game quite a bit. As Hershberger's in the shotgun, flanked by a running back on either side. This time the give is going to be to Joe Hole, and Joe is going to be brought down 
right at the line of scrimmage. Actually, it backs him up a little bit. Columbus Grove will burn that last time out. Now Lanise is going to be in a punting situation here. And that is a huge play by the Grove defense. As they hold them to no gain there, they lose yardage there, and you're going to force Final a punt. And they can come out for this punt or just take their time. they got 3.15 to go to tie this thing up. As far as the Bulldogs are concerned, those three plays went exactly according to plan. Now the offense has to step up. And we've seen some big special team plays here tonight, too, as we saw a, a field goal blocked earlier in the game. It was Columbus Grove going for the field goal blocked uh, as we went into uh, the locker room at the half. Now, see what happens when Grove gets the ball back as they burnt their final timeout. And again, want to mention one more time, we are accepting nominations for the John Reed Leadership Award. Nominate coaches who exemplify Christian character, humility, discipline, mentorship, leadership, commitment to others, and excellence on the field. Nominations can be made at WOSN.TV slash John Reed. I've been around a long time. I remember John. Yeah. I didn't realize I've been around this long, but I remember John coaching back in Back in the day when I was following the Blue Jays at WTOH. Now, this is interesting, Doug. They don't have Jacob Hershberger back in doing the punt here. They've got an Is it Kennedy? I can't see the number here. I think that's Kennedy, yeah. who is listed as a punter. Yeah. And he gets a good one away. Does a nice job. Well, we saw him kick the extra point. He's got a strong leg. So, yeah. great job by the young man. The left footer, he does a great job of pinning him deep. He got does him back his to the job. 15. Yeah, he does his job. So here comes the Columbus Grove offense. A lot of field in front of them, 3.05 remaining in the game, and no timeouts for the Bulldogs. If you're Allen East, the first thing you want to do is keep your man in front of you. You do not want them to get behind you. You don't want to give up the big play. Let them go across the middle. You, there, there's no timeout. That clock's going to continue to run. Well, we've been impressed with how disciplined the Allen yes, East yeah. defense has been against the playmakers that Columbus Grove has. And they'll need to do it for about three more minutes to come home with the victory. Renner takes the snap, going to fire to the near sideline. He's got a man open in Shep Halker. Halker made a couple of people miss. He'll be brought down inbounds, but the clock will stop as they're able to get the first down, get out past the 30 to the 34-yard line. I like that play by Columbus Grove, starting out with a nice, easy pitch and catch. Get your guy in open space. Let him create a little bit. Snap is back once again. He's going to go down the middle of the field, and again it is picked off, and that should ice the game. It hung out there, and Bryce Avery, the senior, comes flying across to come up with the interception. Bryce Avery was not in the play, Doug, and he comes from his uh, left position, and he just hawks the ball and finds it and makes a spectacular catch. Well, the intended receiver was Trenton Barraza. He was pretty well covered, but you try and get it to your big playmaker in that situation. However, Allen East had it scouted out well. And now a chance to bring home the victory on homecoming at Allen East. And look, I don't want to put the uh, <laughs> cart in front of the horse, but th this is as, if Allen East continues this, th this is as big a win as they've had in a long time. This is a huge win. I would be hard-pressed to disagree with that. Snap us back. They are going to have to run plays. Can't quite go to the victory formation just yet. Hershberger er, going to take it for about one yard over to his left. Well, he's going to snap second down with less than two minutes to go. So let's see if they can keep that clock moving. If they pick up the first down, obviously the game's over. And they're going to, and I would imagine they're going to keep the ball on the ground. I can't imagine them throwing the ball here. <laughs> now, you know, that you would be I, bold. Yeah, you and I aren't calling plays. Yeah. <laughs> that would certainly be an aggressive move at yes, this juncture would. in the game. 2.05 left. As the Mustangs eat up every part of the play clock here. There's the give to Jack Hole, and. Got a nice opening on the right side of the line as he gets it across the 40 out to the 41 yard line before he's brought down. At the homecoming, you can see, well, it's been quite the night for Jacob Hershberger. <laughs> That's right. The homecoming king, he was crowned earlier this evening. Well, he's the king right now. He's He's been everything. He around. is yeah. feeling it for sure. And just a minute and a half away from bringing home a big victory over Columbus Grove. Again, 
Allen East has the all-time series record against the Bulldogs, but it's been the Bulldogs more so as of late. And here it is. If he can get the first down here, this game is over. Third down and two. Give it to Hole, and he is brought yeah. down. He Maybe did. got back to the line of scrimmage, but no further. He did not get there, and a great job by the Columbus Grove interior line of stopping the play. They're going to get the ball back with just... Let's see here. Maybe about 20 seconds yeah. or so. Well, we saw it last week with a block punt in the Van Wert Wapa Connecticut game. <laughs> I was going to say. Any, anything's possible, and I can promise you this. The Columbus Grove uh, line is going to be coming hard after this punt. Barraza back to return. They're going to have Hershberger punt this one away. He's done the majority of the punting duties tonight. Yeah, they're going to take the penalty. Or they're, or they're going to take a timeout. Excuse me, they got a timeout, yeah. And that's what they do. They'll take a timeout. We will take a timeout as well when we come back. It'll be time for an Allen East punt and 24 seconds left in this contest. We're back after this on WOSN. Our game brought to you tonight in part by Northwest Ohio Recycling. They're our red zone sponsor in Pandora. You can pay top dollar for aluminum, copper, brass, and scrap iron. Also tonight brought to you by Dale's Concrete. Touchdowns brought to you by Dale's Concrete. We've had one of them. It belongs to Allen East. High snap. There is the kick. 20 seconds remain. The kick got away. It's going to take an Allen East roll. And it is going to be downed inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. Well, partner, I held my breath on that snap because it was a high <laughs> snap. And he did a terrific job of corralling that ball and getting a fantastic kick in those situations. My goodness. Well, when you have an athlete like Jacob Hershberger <laughs> back there, yeah. he's able to climb the ladder a little bit to uh, to bring that down and make it look a little bit more routine than perhaps uh, it should have been. Well, why do I feel like we're far from over? <laughs> I mean, you mentioned it last week. The end of the uh, Van Wert Walpaw game was absolutely bananas. And this being a one possession ball game and 13 seconds left, I mean, Allen East cannot celebrate a homecoming win yet. They've got to buckle down here for 13 more seconds. Renner, shotgun, five wide. Fires it out to the sideline to Barraza. That is incomplete now with nine seconds. Make it eight seconds as the clock stops. Yeah, you've gotten, I, I think this is your last play because you're going to have to throw it down as far as you can or do a, uh, and I know he doesn't have the arm strength to get it around there, but you're either going to have to do it like a, a hook and ladder or a. Uh, We've even seen one of yeah, those already. Exactly, tonight. exactly. I just don't think you have time without the timeouts to, you know, a short pass to the sideline does you no good. No. It's the same position. So this, for all intents and purposes, will be for all the marbles. Renner, shotgun. He's got one back in the backfield with him. Takes the snap, steps back, fires across the middle. It's high and incomplete. And we'll get time for one more play with two seconds left. One more play. And that's what the Allen East kids are saying. We got one more play. That's exactly what the coaches are telling them. You can't let up now. I've been very impressed with the focus of this Allen East defense yeah, that's all a, evening. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And uh, th these are two fantastic teams. I I'm just going to call it right now. <laughs> You're, you're going to see these guys in the playoffs, both of them. Absolutely. <laughs> Empty backfield for Renner. Time to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Now he's rolling to his right. Skips out of a tackle. Good on Cork, one downfield, and that is picked off. And that will do it for your ball game. The interception brought down by Cade Wireman and Allen East. With a big victory on homecoming, here comes the student section <laughs> to greet their victorious Mustang. 7 nothing. your final. Allen East will now move to 4-1, and 2-0 and in the Northwest Conference. Columbus Grove will fall to 3-2, and 1-1 one one in conference play. Look at this, Doug. This is what I love about high school football in Northwest Ohio. Look at those students. They're just as excited as that team is. And like I said, this is as big a victory for this school in a long time. Congratulations to them. Statement made by Allen East with a 7-0 victory here tonight. We'll step aside. More coverage on WOSN right after this.
Welcome back one last time to Allen East High School. A big victory on homecoming for the Allen East Mustangs. We're now joined by head coach Joe Billings. Coach, congratulations on a big victory tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Well, from the get-go, I think the word that stood out to me for your defense was discipline. They played their assignments extremely well tonight. Yeah, um, the kids played excellent. Um, you know, a kid who really stood out is Keaton Miller. Uh, he's a senior defensive end. He's right there. He played one heck of a game, man. Um, very selfish, but overall as a group, the coaches did a great job getting them ready, uh, game plan wise. Uh, they got big physical kids. They're well coached. Uh, it's a really good football team, uh, but we just made a few more plays than they did. Absolutely, and you were able to rebound from mistakes in this game too, and really as it came down the stretch, it seemed to whoever's going to negate their mistakes the most was going to come away with a victory. Yeah, I mean, at any time in a game like this, it just comes down to who's going to make some plays, and we just got one. <laughs> that's, that's what it is, man, we just got one. That's the way it goes. Well, I mean, you've got the athletes on your side of the ball too. Jacob Hershberger, a really good night for him at QB and on the defense. Yeah, yeah absolutely. He does a ton for us. He's a tremendous kid. Um, you know, just saw Awesome. You know, when the game's on the line, he's always there. You know, it's awesome. Coach, congratulations. Go celebrate with your team. Thank you. Of course, that's uh, head coach Joel Billingsley with the Allen East Mustangs. Huge <laughs> victory tonight for Allen East. Happy to be able to bring it to you here on WOSN. And that'll do it tonight. Again, Allen East, 7 nothing. Don't see any scores like that these days, but the Mustangs come away with a victory on homecoming. I'm Doug Jenkins for WOSN.